Okay. Um, thank you. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, our virtual, I guess, hybrid meeting uh, for Tuesday, June 21st. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'll ask everyone to please turn your cell phones off or place them on vibrate uh, so it doesn't disturb the meeting. And I'll re remind everybody of declaration of pecuniary interest if it arises. You can declare it now or declare it if something pops up later. Um, before we get started, I just want to say it's been one month since the storm. And I thank staff for everything they've done um, to try and get us through this. Uh, I know it's been a busy time and uh, I know we're going to continue to be uh, working on this for a lot of months ahead. So um, the storm hit right across our township. We've been getting uh, a lot of complaints or questions um, from different areas. Some were hit harder than others, but uh, you know it's been just devastating for everyone. And uh, we will get through this. It's uh, it's like I said, it's going to take a lot of months to get uh, things back in shape. And uh, we're doing the best we can with what staff we have. So um, with that, I'll, uh, we have minutes here from the regular council meeting on June 7th. I'll take a motion to receive them if they're in order. Moved by Councillor Webb. Seconder. Um, Councillor Pomeroy. Couldn't tell if that was Dave or, or your hand there, Barry. Uh, the podium's kind of blocking it. So. Anyway, I put that hand up. You couldn't see me, so that's why I'm out here. Okay. All right. So all in favor? And that's carried. So I'm going to take a motion to go into uh, a public meeting for a zoning bylaw amendment. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux and seconder. Councillor Webb, all in favor? And that's carried. So we have one... Uh, Zoning bylaw amendments is for JJ Hudson. This is a statutory public meeting held under section 34 of the Planning Act. The owner applicant is JJ Hudson. The property is described as part of lot 11 mm -hmm. and 12, concession five, having a municipal address of 128 Mile of Memory Road, Belmont Ward, having a property roll number of 15310100032. Any person may attend the public meeting and or make verbal or written representation either in support or opposition of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. Please keep your video off, microphone muted uh, during the meeting until the chair invites comments regarding the planning matter. If a person or public body does not make oral submission at the public meeting or make written submission to the Township of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen before the proposed zoning bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen to the Ontario Land Tribunal. If a person or public body does not make an oral submission at the public meeting or make written submission to the Township of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen before the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing or an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to add the person or public body as a party. If you wish to be notified of the passing of the zoning bylaw amendment, you must make a written request to the Township of Havelock, Palmont, Methuen. With that, I'll uh, turn it over to Aria. Through to you, Mayor. Good morning, members of Council. So the purpose and uh, effect of this report is to present for the consideration and requisite approval of Council to amend the uh, Township's comprehensive zoning bylaw to rezone lands identified as 128 Mile of Memories Road. Um, it's currently under the ownership of, uh, you're right, J.J. Hudson. Um, so the rezoning will change the category of the subject property as a condition of a, of a, of a consent application. Uh, the application number is B8521, while also introducing some uh, site-specific regulations. So it is the re uh, recommendation of this report that the draft bylaw be passed uh, and that the balance of this report be received. Uh, consent application, just a little bit of background information in regards to this file. So uh, the consent application B8521 uh, was recommended for approval by council on January 11th, 2022, and was subsequently approved by Peterborough Land Division. Um, the purpose of uh, Peterborough County Land Division. Um, the purpose of the consent application was to sever a parcel of land from 128 Mile of Memories Road uh, to create a new lot. 
uh, only the severed parcel is subject of this uh, rezoning application to satisfy condition of the consent application. <clears throat> So this application must conform to the provincial policy statements, the growth plan, as well as the township and the county's official plans, as well as the township zoning bylaw. Uh, so in relation to the PPS, uh, the provincial policy statements and the growth plan, uh, the PPS and the growth plan include policies which recognize limited residential development in rural areas. Uh, the PPS and the growth plan also emphasize the protection and, and consideration of uh, natural resources. Um, so the property owner had commissioned or he had completed an environmental impact statement uh, or a study, we should call it, uh, which identified a year round surface water uh, pond towards the northeastern portion of the property. Um, this rezoning will essentially set, uh, serve to place an environmental protection zone uh, on the 30 meter vegetation protection zone, which is referred to as a buffer um, of the pond. Uh, as there are currently no development applications or proposals for the vacant parcel, the application is considered both con consistent, uh, sorry, consistent with both the PPS and the growth plan. So in relation to the county and uh, township official plans, the, uh, the, the subject property is designated rural and cultural landscape. Um, the policies in the county OP also emphasize the use of uh, rural landscape and, and the fact that there should be no impact to any natural vegetation. Um, the, the township OP designation for the rural property is what's currently on the property. Um, the policies of the official plan prohibit development or site alteration within any wetlands or any natural heritage features. Uh, so the EIS that was completed by the applicant <clears throat> determined that there were no wetlands adjacent to the property uh, and that the environmental protection zoning will serve to protect the uh, surface water pond. So this application does conform to or is consistent with the township official plan and the county official plan. And finally, in, regard, in regards to the, uh, to the zoning bylaw, the entire parcel is zoned rural uh, and the township's comprehensive zoning bylaw. Uh, if, if approved, this application will serve to place uh, an environmental protection zoning or referred to as EP zoning uh, on the 30 meter buffer uh, of the pond. Um, and the rest of the parcel would be rezoned to uh, SD, which is uh, special district 251, which is consistent with the regulations of the rural zone. No additional development is, is currently proposed on the severed lot and uh, or the severed parcel. And it is anticipated that should any new development be proposed on the severed parcel, um, that the development will be uh, able to meet all the applicable uh, regulations of the zoning bylaw. So in conclusion, this application satisfies the spirit and intent of the township official plan, the zoning bylaw, and is consistent with uh, the county OP, uh, as well as the growth plan and PPS. Um, notices were circulated to all prescribed uh, agencies and adjacent property owners for their review. And so far, we have no concerns with the um, with regards to the zone amendment application. And this concludes my uh, report to council. All right. Thank you, Arya. Um, I'll uh, ask if there's anybody wishing to speak in opposition of this application. For the second time, anybody wishing to speak in opposition? Third time, anybody wishing to speak in opposition? Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor of this? I don't know if the applicant's here. Uh, is he here, are you? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, no. Okay, all right then. Um, is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? Third time, anybody wishing to speak in favor? With that, I'll open it up to council. Uh, is there any questions or comments around this? Deputy Mayor Duro, go ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, thank you, Aria, for your <clears throat> report. As I went through the report on the weekend, I didn't, nothing jumped out at me that wasn't was concerning. And uh, Beaver County is also past this. Excuse me. <clears throat> this morning, so I would make a motion that uh, we accept your recommendation with all the approvals in the way. All right, so we have a, a mover here. Is there a seconder for this application? Councilor yeah. Palmer? Okay, Councilor Palmer seconds it. All in favor of receiving this? And that's carried. Okay, thank you. And so we do have the bylaw here. What's Council's thoughts? Did you want to get that out of the way too now or do you want to leave it to the end of the meeting? Okay, I guess we got to come out of the public meeting and um, I'll, I'll get a motion to come out of the public meeting. Sorry about that. And then we'll, uh, and then Councilor Pomeroy, I'll take your question or comment. All in favor of 
going out of this uh, public meeting. And that's carried. Sorry, three, Mayor Martin, if we could get a mover and a seconder for that motion. All right. Councilor Pomeroy, are you moving that? Yeah. Okay, do I have a seconder for that? Seconder? Councilor Webb, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, Councilor Pomeroy, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Are you in favor of doing the uh, bylaw now? Yeah. Yes. All right, then. Um, We'll uh, we'll get that out of the way then. So we do have a bylaw here, and it's a bylaw to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw number 1995-42 as amended, in order to change the zone category on a portion of lands currently zoned rural um, for application B eighty five twenty one. Somebody want to move that? We'll move that, Mr. Mayor. Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Drew. Seconder. Councilor Webb, any questions or comments? All in favor, and that's carried. All right, then, we're uh, gonna go into Committee of Adjustment with uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux in the chair. I'll take a motion to uh, go into that. Uh, moved by Councilor Pomeroy, seconded by Councilor Webb. All in favor, and that's carried. Okay, Deputy Mayor Giroux, take over. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council, I'll call this meeting of uh, Committee of Adjustment meeting to order and remind the members of the committee of their requirements to disclose any pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof if the occasion arises. This public meeting is held under Section 45 of the Planning Act and its regulations. Yeah, and I will ask our planner for his report. Through to the chair, thank you, Deputy Mayor Jarrow. Uh, so the application A0722 for the property owners, uh, John and Kathy Foster and Linda Smith on 665 Peninsula Road, uh, zoned under Special District 182 with a shoreline designation of a town uh, or in the township official plan um, of shoreline designation. So the, the purpose of this minor variance application is to seek relief from Section 4.1 EVI uh, to permit the construction of uh, a 44.5 meter square, or we can translate that to 480 square foot single story detached garage with an additional half story of storage space. Uh, the application will have the following effect. One, reduce the minimum required setback from the rear lot line from six meters to three meters. So the recommendation of this report is that the minor merits application be approved uh, for with the following conditions. That the development be completed in accordance with the site plan submitted that uh, any requisite approval be received by applicable approval authorities prior to the issuance of a building permit, that a 20 day lapse or appeal period lapse prior to the issuance of a building permit, that the building permit be issued within 12 months of the approval of this application, and that the balance of this or the balance of the information in this report be received. So as my report stipulates, the, the township uh, has determined that the application meets all four tests of a minor variance. Uh, it is consistent with the provincial policy statements, as well as the uh, growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. Uh, in relation to this application, the Crow Valley Conservation Authority has commented. Uh, they were consulted at, from the very beginning, I should say, um, and they had expressed no concern so long as the uh, development is, consult, uh, is constructed outside the floodplain area, as prescribed in their property inquiry form that was created uh, two months ago. Um, so the location of the proposed garage is situated outside the floodplain area and is consistent with the Crow Valley Conservation Authority's recommendation. Uh, and this uh, concludes my report to council. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is the applicant present this morning? What are our records? Is the applicant present this morning? Are you getting on? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Hearing none, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application? Give it a minute. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? 
Hearing none, is there any questions and comments from the members of the committee on the gentleman? We've all had a chance to go through this application. It's Councilor Pomeroy. I'll make a motion. We approve it. Councilor Pomeroy has made a motion that this application be approved. Do I have a second? Councilor Webb is going to second the motion. Is there any further discussion on the motion? I'm going to call the motion. All in favor of the motion? The motion is carried fast. Thank you. The next one here, if I can. My computer up was going quick enough. <clears throat> um, I won't have to call up the committee of adjustment again. We've already done that. So I will ask Erin for his report on the next application, A0722. Through to the chair, application A0822 for property owners uh, or property owner William Reed on 41 Fire Route 84A, which is zoned seasonal residential with a shoreline designation in the Township OP. Um, the, the purpose of this minor variance application is to seek relief from section 4.37 and section 12.21C of the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw to, per, uh, to permit the construction of a 23.7 meter square, or we can translate that to 256 square foot uh, addition, having the following effects. Re one, reducing the minimum required setback for the high water mark from 30 meters uh, or 100 feet uh, as per section 4.37 to 17.5 meters or 57 feet, uh, and also reducing the minimum required front yard setback from 21.3 meters or 70 feet um, to 17.5 or 57.4 feet. So the recommendation of this report is that minor variance application A0822 be approved with the following conditions, that the development be done in accordance with the site plan submitted, that any requisite approval be received by applicable approval authorities prior to the billing permit being issued, uh, that the property owners enter either into a uh, development agreement with the township, uh, recognizing that the development will be taking place on the shoreline uh, road allowance, which at, the at this time is not owned by the property owners, um, or the applicants can can prove uh, provide proof of purchase of the shoreline road allowance through uh, um, through consultation with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. Also, that the building permit be issued within 12 months of this application um, or the approval of this application, and that the balance of this uh, or the information of this report be received. As stipulated in this report, the, the township has determined that the application does meet all four tests of a minor variance and is consistent with the uh, county as well as the township official plans and the PPS, um, which is the provincial policy statements, as well as the growth plan. So Crow Valley has provided commentary citing no concerns with the uh, with the proposed development um, in relation to uh, the the shoreline uh, road allowance. Uh, I, I shouldn't say road allowance because it's not really a road allowance. It's, it's just a shoreline crown reserve. Um, and so the property owners have actually provided proof uh, of purchase of the, uh, the, 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 the shoreline crown reserve. And they have also consulted with uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, who we have also the township been in consultation with as well. So this concludes my report to council. All right, thank you very much for that report. <clears throat> Is the applicant present with this morning for our records? Yes, I am, sir. Okay, and uh, you will have a chance to uh, speak in a moment if you desire to. Thank you. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition of this application? Hearing none, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? And the applicant now has a chance to add anything. Now would be the time to do it. Thank you. Um, my name is William Reed. I own the property. I have applied for the purchase of the uh, shoreline from the ministry. And uh, I was wondering if there was any relief from the uh, um, agreement and the, and the fees with respect to the, uh, um, the building permit. Or would I have to uh, pro provide uh, actual proof that I own the property prior to the building permit? 
uh, at a lost area for planner, the city planner. To through, through to you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Yes, um, the the letter that you provided, uh, Bill, is uh, sufficient to prove that there is purchase of the shoreline road allowance. Um, I, I would recommend that you do uh, give a confirmation from, um, I think it's Christine Apostola from the Ministry of Natural Resources, and then afterwards we can issue you the building permit. Okay, so, okay, so I, um, that's fine, I can get her to give me some confirmation of purchase, and then I can go ahead with the building permit after the 20 days. Through to you, Deputy Mayor. Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you. I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation. That's pretty hard to issue a building from that week. All right. Are there any questions or comments from the committee of adjustment? Mayor Martin? Yeah, I would, I would move the recommendation uh, as soon as we receive the. Uh, that the property's been purchased there. So I would move this recommendation. Moved by uh, Mayor Martin, seconded by Councillor Webb. We'll call a motion unless there's any other further discussion. Seeing none, all in favor of the motion. Our motion is carried. Thank you, Eric, for your two reports. And I will uh, ask for a motion to adjourn the chair for the meeting back over to Mayor Martin. Moved by Councilor Webb and second by Councilor Pomeroy. All in favor? Here. Okay, thank you, thank you Deputy Mayor Giroux. Um, so we're going to move into planning reports. Um, and our first planning report, we have a number of them today, uh, is Sonia Elsonen. She's going to, with regards to a holding provision here. Um, Sonia, welcome. Good morning, Mayor and members of Council. Uh, my report is in regards to property known as part lots eight and nine concession seven with municipal address of 594 593A owned by John and Geraldine Elliott. The purpose of a report is to assist council in the requisite removal of a holding provision on the subject lands provided the requisite conditions have been met. Recommendation is that council proceed to enact a bylaw having the effect of removing the holding provision and proceed to enact a bylaw for the signed road agreement and further that the balance of this report be received. The background is as follows. On November 16th, 2021, council proceeded to enact bylaw 2021-062, being a bylaw to rezone the subject property in order to permit the construction of a detached garage while introducing certain site specific regulations. It incorporated a holding provision until corresponding conditions of council were satisfied being the execution and registration of a road agreement. The purpose of the road agreement is to ensure that the property owners complete the process entering into the agreement, recognizing that the property for year round occupancy is a permitted use. The signed road agreement has been received and would now therefore be appropriate for council to proceed to pass a bylaw to remove the hold as well as the bylaw to authorize them entering into this road agreement, all of which is respectfully submitted for council's consideration. That being the conclusion of my report. Thank you. All right, thank you, Sonia. Um, is there any questions from council with regards to this report? If not, I'll take a motion to receive or to uh, enact the recommendations here. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux that we go with the recommendations uh, as provided. Seconder. Uh, Councillor Pomeroy. All right, any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion. And that's carried. Okay, thank you, Sonia. Thank you. So we have a few more reports here from Aria. You're going to be busy today. Um, so our second one here is a uh, with regards to a lot addition for application B2922. Go ahead, Arya. Through to you, Mayor, members of council. So the severance application before council is in, it's correct, it's an addition to a lot. It's application B2922. 
property owners being Cindy Grant and Trevor Watkins. The purpose of this report is to obtain a, a recommendation of, of council to be submitted to uh, Peterborough County Land Division regarding uh, consent application B2922. It's the recommendation of this report that the council uh, advise uh, Peterborough County Land Division that the township does endorse this application for consent uh, file number B2922 for a lot addition referenced in the attached uh, consent application. Um, that uh, the second re recommendation is that the merger agreement for the parcel to be added to uh, be provided to the township, um, as well as that each severed and retained lots be rezoned to the satisfaction of the municipality. Also that the entrance permit for the severed lot be successfully applied for, and that all requisite approval uh, approvals be received from applicable approval authorities prior to the issuance of the building permit for the severed lot. So the consent uh, proposal was subject of a preliminary severance review completed by Peterborough County Land Division um, in, in September of 2018. Um, as proposed, the consent would have the effect of severing the interior lot um, identified as 250 Burnt Dam Road. Um, there will be no creation of a new lot, um, and the, the, the lot to be added to is uh, comprised of approximately 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.18 acres, sorry, I should say, uh, with approximately 18.7 meters of frontage uh, along Burnt Dam Road, and approximately 19.7 meters of frontage on, on uh, Round Lake. So the development of an accessory use, which is secondary and subordinate to the primary vacation dwelling on the shoreline parcel, um, is being proposed on the benefiting lands, uh, much like the neighboring parcel. So it is compatible with the surrounding uses. Uh, based on the township's review of the subject application together with the supporting material, um, it is the township's planning opinion that the proposed consent conforms to the policies of the township official plan, as well as the regulations in the uh, township's zoning bylaw. Should council uh, elect to support the, the application subject to the uh, standard conditions, um, that was stated above, the township would fur further note that a rezoning, again, both of uh, the, the severed and retained parcels will be required. So that concludes my um, my report to council. All right, then. Thank you. Um, is there any questions or comments from council? Seeing, uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor Jarrell. Through you, uh, Mayor Murray, just so I'm clear here, this will not create a backlog. No. No, okay. Thank you. Through to you, Mayor. No, it, uh, it it will not. It's um, consistent with the um, with the applicable uses, and it does have frontage on Burnt Dam Road on both sides. Thank you. Okay. All right then. So, uh, what's Council's thoughts here? I would move the recommendation, Mr. Mayor. Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, thank you. Next uh, area, we have another lot addition uh, for application B2022. Uh, Susan and John Phillips. Go ahead. Through to you, Mayor, members of Council. So Council is in, is in receipt of the uh, severance application for an addition to a lot application number B2022 under the property owners, Suzanne and John Phillips. The purpose of this report is to obtain a recommendation of Council for Peterborough County Land Division regarding the above reference consent application. So the recommendation of this report is that the application B2022 be deferred until the applicants can provide an accurate assessment of site-specific metrics for the retained parcel via a survey. Um, such an assessment would be at the sole expense of the applicant and that the balance of this report be received. So just a little bit of background information. The application now before council was filed with Peterborough Land Division in February of 2022. Prior to the submission, however, the consent application was subject of a preliminary severance review completed by um, Peterborough County's planning department in December of 2021. So just a little bit of background in terms of policy guidance. So the policies in section 2.2.2.1J uh, uh, speak to zoning conformity and, and the granting of any consents um, only be obtained where the severed and retained parcels comply with the uh, established minimum lot area and frontage requirements of the township's uh, comprehensive zoning bylaw. While 
there's no new lot being created here. Such an approach would be consistent with the uh, the shoreline designation policies in section 3.3.4 of the township's official plan. The, um, the information provided by the applicants and agents indicates that the northern lot would maintain a 46 meter uh, frontage on Belmont Lake, which it would conform with the minimum requirements in the zoning bylaw. However, based on a, a review of the uh, county's GIS mapping, it appears that the frontage would be closer to about 34 meters. Um, so this discrepancy was relayed to the applicants very early on and the agents, and, and uh, we, we, at, we had asked for further confirmation of the exact frontage of the northern lot, uh, and such, a, such an analysis was, not, was never provided. So therefore, it is the township's planning opinion that the applicants have not provided all information required under both the Planning Act as well as Ontario, Ontario Regulation or OREG uh, 19796. Uh, this is also prescribed as a prescribed uh, condition of um, uh, the township's official plan policies as well. So based on the outlined uh, uh, proposal outlined in the consent application, both lots would sufficiently meet the minimum lot acreage for the seasonal residential zone. And while the lot for the proposed southern lot, uh, sorry, the lot frontage for the proposed southern lot would increase, it would be at the expense of the retained lot, which is the northern lot. Uh, while the information in the consent, again, does stipulate that the retained parcel does meet 46 meters, when we did our GIS mapping, um, it showed that the frontage was closer to 34, and the applicants will be required to demonstrate through a survey the correct measurements of the frontage of the retained lot. Um, just one important note that I want to make, without any accurate information provided in, in the application, the onus on the township in reviewing and evaluating uh, the, the application becomes extremely burdensome and difficult. Therefore, it is a recommendation of this report that council defer this application until the accurate site specific metrics of, for the retained lot are provided. And that concludes my uh, uh, report to council. Thank you, Arya. Um, okay, so uh, Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. Yeah, I would like to support Larry's uh, recommendation that we not approve until we have more information from the clients. Okay, so I have a motion to defer this uh, application and Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Hello, through you, Mr. Mayor, can you uh, hear me first of all? Yep. Okay, I'm having some uh, in-house technical difficulties here and I'm running off my cell phone presently. So it's a little okay. hard to maneuver, um, but I would uh, second the recommendation uh, from Mr. Pomeroy, Councillor Pomeroy, sorry. Okay, uh, so I have a mover and a second. Are there any questions around this? All right, all in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Okay, our next report here is a merger agreement for Thomas and James Shaw. Are you go ahead? Through to you, Mayor, to, to members of Council. So the uh, the, pur the purpose of this report is kind of short. <laughs> it's to seek, it's seek approval for a merger agreement pertaining to the uh, property identified as 249 Fire Route 84, which is lots uh, 25 and 26 and concession three of the Methune Ward, um, as identified as a condition of uh, consent to sever for an application uh, B8220. Um, these merger agreements are pretty straightforward. We had uh, gotten vetting from uh, our uh, uh, solicitors, municipal solicitors. Um, and so the recommendation of this report is that the mayor and clerk be authorized to enter into a merger agreement with Thomas Shaw uh, to merge the severed parcel of land for property uh, 249 Fire Route 40, uh, 84, sorry, with the abutting properties to the west and east uh, being 247 Fire Route 48, owned by Thomas Shaw, and 255 Fire Route 48, which is owned by James Shaw. So just a tiny bit of background information, this consent to sever um, application, uh, B8220, was recommended for approval by Council on June uh, 15, 2021. Uh, the, the Peterborough County Land Division Committee um, issued the attached notice of decision on August 10th, 2021. Uh, in which the severance was granted with the condition, which was condition five, stipulating the requirement for a merger agreement. Um, in terms of financial impact, there are no financial impacts uh, related to the approval for the merger agreement. All costs are associated with this agreement are the responsibility of the applicant. And that concludes my report to council. All right, then. So 
um, yeah, so it's just some technical things there to try and make this happen. Is that right, Arya? Through to you, Mayor, that is correct. Okay, all right then. So I'll open it up to council. Um, what's your thoughts here on this? Can I ask a question, Mr. Mayor? Sure, go ahead. We used to, um, area to you uh, through the mirror, it was a 12 month period for these types of things, but because of COVID, they were allowed another 12 months. Is that correct? Through to you, Mayor, to you, Deputy, G Deputy Mayor Gerald, that is correct. The official plan, was, sorry, not official plan, the Planning Act was amended to reflect uh, uh, some. Um, relief, I should say, in relation to uh, um, uh, in relation to any severance conditions to be met. Um, I, I think even with uh, the added 12 months, the applicants also here, they're still within the original timeline of the 12 months. So that is correct. Yeah, that's all the questions I <laughs> So this was uh, three parcels of the land uh, merged together and then severing them down the middle. Is that what it is uh, to split them up again? Through to you, Mayor, that, that is correct. Um, so what essentially is, is, is the, uh, the, portion, the middle portion was to be severed off and to be added onto uh, the west and the eastern lots. Uh, one of the conditions of the severance was for the applicants to uh, demo the, the existing structure that was on the property, uh, which they have completed. Um, and so this is the final sort of condition left. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. So what's council's thought? Uh, Deputy Mayor Drogo, go ahead. Approve the recommendation, Mr. Mayor, through you. Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Drogo. Do I have a seconder? Speak. Councilor Webb, any questions? All in favor? And that's carried, thank you. All right, our next one here is uh, with regard planning and lower trend conservation extension. Aria, go ahead. Through to you, Mayor, to, to members of council. So the purpose of this report is to provide background information uh, and to inform council of the research that the planning as well as the building department has conducted on moving forward with the processing of um, extending the southern portion of the township into lower trend conservation authorities uh, jurisdiction. This has been sort of a project that has stretched multiple, I, I, well, I don't want to answer out of ignorance, but multiple years. And, uh, and so uh, multiple people have sort of had different says in, or not says, but input. Uh, so that's why I included it under planning and building. <clears throat> so the recommendation of this report that council provide a letter to the Lower Trent Conservation Authority or the LTC Board of Directors expressing interest in joining the Lower Trent Conservation as a member municipality and capturing the southern portion of the township under the jurisdiction of the Lower Trent Conservation Authority. As we all are aware, the County of Peterborough is currently under the process of updating their official plan um, for which the township has opted to adopting uh, the, the official plan uh, while when it's in effect actually. So the, the county conducted a thorough investigation of the, uh, the growth prospects into, into 2051. Um, and they essentially concluded that Aspidal Norwood as well as Cabin Monaghan are fast approaching their growth limits. And so it, it would be necessary for other municipalities such as Selwyn and Havelock Belmont to allocate uh, their, their growth, uh, some growth towards their municipalities. So there will be a major need to process uh, development applications, approvals, severances um, in, in a more efficient kind of manner. Um, currently the Southern portion of the township outlined in the attached appendices are under no jurisdiction of any conservation authority. And this has the potential of not only creating logistical issues, but it could lead to planning as well as legal issues down the line. Um, currently the procedure when lands do not fall under a conservation authority uh, is for is to consult with the Ministry of uh, Natural Resources. I said Ministry of Environment in my report, however, I should uh, edit that to Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. Uh, such a process is often uh, rather lengthy and it, it often leads to you know bureaucratic entanglements. So a more efficient process would be to have a conservation authority to to uh, consult with and have jurisdiction over those lands so that the township can uh, township staff can consult with them directly as opposed to um, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. 
Um, furthermore, no conservation authority in these lands, coupled with the growth prospects that the township will be receiving in the coming years. The, uh, the township uh, can possibly run into some environmental, and again, I mentioned planning as well as legal issues uh, down the line that could be both costly and lengthy. So it would be optimal if there were a conservation authority to have jurisdiction over these lands, provided consultation, um, to provide consultation and to avoid any such situations. So Lower Trent Conservation Authority has previously provided interest in uh, taking over these lands. Uh, it may be in the best interest of count, uh, or the township to, to begin the process for allowing the Conservation Authority to uh, include these lands under their jurisdiction. And finally, the last note I'm just going to make is that the township's official plan policies related to um, stormwater management uh, require uh, consultation with uh, conserv any conservation authority to ensure that the, the proper procedures are in place and implemented to protect the quantity and quality of the water systems within the municipality. Furthermore, the official plan policies related to development within environmentally protected lands, which is under section 3.7.8, require consultation with the conservation authorities uh, uh, to, to protect the integrity of those environmentally protected lands. So there's a variety of environmentally protected features present in these lands, and I've highlighted that in my appendices including unevaluated as well as provincially significant wetlands, uh, deer wintering areas, woodlands, significant woodlands. So any planning related matter that is, you know, comes sort of to my desk or any planning related matter overall is governed by the provincial policy statements. And so, uh, as well as any provincial plan. So the natural heritage reference manual for the natural heritage policies of the provincial policy statements um, it, this is issued by the government and conservation authorities can provide permission through a permit process to develop on lands within adjacent or adjacent to uh, environmentally sensitive lands. So in the absence of this authority, this uh, responsibility would fall to the township as well as the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. So this concludes my report to council. Um, it isn't necessarily taking the steps. It's just starting the process. That's really it. Thank you, Arya. And yeah, well done. This document uh, explains everything. So uh, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to open it up to council. Uh, we have a recommendation here. Uh, does somebody want to move that? Councillor Ellis? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, I gladly make the uh, motion to approve the recommendation. Long, long overdue, as we all know. So uh, yeah, I'll make that motion. We approve. Okay, moved by uh, Councillor Ellis. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Pomeroy? You're seconding that with a comment? Yeah, with a comment. I would just like to thank Gary there for this report because it's long, long overdue. And if you look at the map, it, it encompasses a big area. And um, we're headed in the right direction. Now we just have to invite uh, the Lord Trent for, for a meeting. I think that should be in order, shouldn't it? Is this sit in the recommendation? Through to you, Mayor. Um, to you, uh, Councillor Pomeroy, correct. So the first step would essentially be to initiate the process. Now, they have an entire process themselves. Yeah. So they it's it's a lengthy process. It's not going to be an overnight thing. No. Um, but at least the expression of interest from Council in the form of either a resolution or uh, matter here um, would essentially be in the form of a letter to the uh, conservation. Exactly. Well, I would like to make a motion that we do that. Well, we have a we have a mover and a seconder here for this part of the thing, okay. uh, for this part of the report. So I'm going to ask a question. All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. And you had something else, then, Barry? Yeah, that we uh, invite the uh, lower trend. Uh, how did you explain that, now, Barry? Um, with them, okay. Through to you, Mayor, to you, uh, Council Palmer. Yes, correct. It, it would, it, we could create communication with, well, we already have communication with Lower Trent. Um, and I'd be, I think that they're more than happy to come present if a second time is needed. Um, they have stipulated and in, in outlined in the uh, report that, uh, that the first step should be a letter of interest to the Board of Directors as they're the governing body. Uh, and so that would be essentially the first step. The, the ne next steps forward, we can kind of coordinate with our CAO as well as council to uh, find what the next steps would be. That's so, what I would like. 
Okay, so uh, Council Palmer is making a motion that we invite them to come to a meeting. Um, do I have a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Webb. Any questions? Question. Go ahead, Dave. Just for clarification, uh, so we don't get ahead of ourselves. We'll certainly invite them for the meeting, and I'm supportive of that. But it won't be until they put all their ducks in a row. In other words, they got a process to go through before we meet with them. Right? Are you? Through to you, Mayor. Yes, uh, to you, Deputy G uh, Deputy Mayor Juro. That is correct. There is a procedure in place. I have been in touch with the manager over at Lower Trent Conservation Authority. She is well aware of the procedure and the interests. Um, so uh, any any further steps would be through um, first would be the letter of, of intent or interest from the township to their board of directors, and then if they wanted to present, uh, if it's necessary, then yes, that would be the next step. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And in that discussion, that's where a lot of things will be decided because there will be a cost to this as far as the levy, like we pay to the Crow Valley, there will be a levy for the lower trend too. To you, um, Mayor uh, Jim, Jim Martin. So yes, that is correct. There will be a levy. Um, it, all of the pricing has sort of been in preliminary talks. We haven't really set in stone any costs so far. This is just mainly just to get the process started. Um, and uh, any clarification, I'm, I'm pretty sure Laura Trent would be more than happy to provide to the township. Okay, thank you. So we do have a motion on the floor and we have a seconder. If there's no other questions, uh, is all in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Okay, thank you, Aria. There's, that's the end of your reports, I think, for this morning. Um, our next report is with Amanda Doherty, um, senior planner with DM Wills. Is she there now or is she available now, uh, Bianca? No, she's not here yet. Okay. So, what's that? I think we went away too quick here with therapy. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I understand she's at another meeting. So, uh, um, is it okay with council if we carry on and then we'll come back when she comes on screen? Is that all right? Yep. Yep. Okay then. All right, so uh, uh, we will come back to uh, the other two planning reports uh, when Amanda becomes available. So we don't have any delegations or presentations this morning listed. So I'm gonna go into staff reports for information. And Sonia has one there uh, with regards to the building activity report. Was there any questions around that? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to receive it. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconder. Councillor Pomeroy? Yes. All right, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we go into staff reports with follow up action. And I'll just catch up here. But uh, our first uh, item here is additional items of six line transfer station, Peter. Yes, good morning, Mayor Martin and members of council. I'd like to present the report. Uh, the purpose is to seek council's approval for additional items <clears throat> regarding the way scale at the six line transfer station. Um, recommendation that council approve and supply an <clears throat> the installation of a new scale attendant building with a steel platform and stairs at a cost of $35,600 uh, uh, to be supplied by Rose Scale, who has the uh, original tender uh, submitted to the town. Okay. Um, all right, then I'll uh, open it up to council here. Anybody have any questions? Deputy Mayor Jarrell, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Uh, thank you, Peter, for your report. Uh, it's pretty self explanatory why the reasons are for the extra the monies that are involved here um, and where it's going to come from. My my only hope is with 
and get these scales up and running is ASAP. Um, I, I know we've made some promises uh, to the township, people that are using it, and uh, I think they're getting a wee bit frustrated. So I see we have a, an installation date of sometime in July. I hope that is a, a true date and not something that the company has just pulled out of the sky. So we need to move forward on this and I'm prepared to make the rec uh, recommend the approval. I do want to see this scale moving. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Okay, so we have a mover and um, the only question I had, Peter, is this all this is all insulated, wired, ready to go? Is that uh, is that the understanding? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, the only thing that is left out of the um, equation here is the, the wire wiring from the existing uh, attendant building over to the uh, the new building. And uh, we've already uh, contracted the local, our township local electrical contractor to do that work for us. So. Okay, thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor Carroll, go ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor Peter, is that on the ground? Through you, Mayor Martin. Yes, it is underground. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. I'll look for a seconder and <clears throat> seconded by Councillor Pomeroy for the comment. Do you no. have a comment? Okay. No, All right. Is there any questions uh, from Council? All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Thank you, Peter. Um, so the next report here is with regards to the transfer station and how the scales will work. Uh, go ahead. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, uh, the purpose of this report is to establish a tipping fee for the six line transfer station weight scale that is scheduled to be fully in operational in July. Uh, the following fees will be established for the six line transfer station weight scale. A minimum charge of $4 crossing the scale with waist weighing 32 kilograms or less. Tipping fee of $125 per ton for waste weighing over the 32 kilograms. And a two bag limit will be accepted with a $2 bag tag without crossing the scale. All right, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. <clears throat> You know, and it will help keep the traffic off the scale if you've only, it'll encourage recycling, I think, uh, by doing it this way. Um, I'll open up to council. Deputy Mayor Drill, go ahead. Once again, Peter, thanks for your report. Um, I think it's a good process. We started here. The one question I have is the electronics in the scale, we're, we're going to be charging uh, 125 a ton, is it? Uh, so the electronics in the scale, if I come in with uh, above 32 kilograms, let's say uh, 103 kilograms, will it pair that down to the exact price for the, for the person going over the scale, or am I going to have to pay $100, $125? This is kind of confusing in the report. Uh, so if I can clarify through you mayor martin so if you have a 32 kilogram which we use uh, the basis of two garbage bags two household black garbage bags um, so that was the minimum 32 kilograms so if you have 35 kilograms it, it's all worked out between the the 32 kilograms and the two dollars and the four dollar minimum so it's all equivalent across the board so if you have a hundred kilograms you're gonna it's 125 dollars per tone so it, it's all relevant from the tags to the weight to the minimum and the weight per tone if that clarifies it well that really didn't maybe i'm <laughs> thick-headed all i want to know if i get yeah. in there with half a tone will the computer in the weigh scale charge me less than 125 dollars Yes, it, it's uh, it's the yes, it, it's the thirty-two kilogram is is the is the balance for the minimum, and anything over is the honey hundred twenty-five dollars per ton. So Thank a ton is a thousand kilograms. Yes, sorry for the. Yeah, and through you, Mayor Martin, if I could just clarify, Peter, help me out here if I get this wrong. The scale will do the math. So for the quantities between 
the 32 kilograms and, and the ton, 125,000 hours, anything that's in between that, the scale will do the calculating and will charge accordingly. Yes, correct. Yes. Based on, based on the parameters that we've established. Thank you, Bob. You, you you asked the question a little bit better than I did. Oh, so well, there you go. <laughs> the teamwork, it's all team. Okay, uh, Councillor Ellis, you had a question? <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Mayor, for the viewing public, Peter, could you explain what is not required to go over the weight scale? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, leafs, uh, yard waste, um, Everything else, like recycle, everything when you come in the scale, I guess, Councillor Ellis, uh, the best way to describe everything that you, when you come in the scale to the right hand side. Uh, so if you stay right, all the recycling, uh, we're going to have the two bag uh, uh, limit on that side as well. Um, and then all the, the electronics, the weave in, uh, the mullocks, uh, the, the organics, everything when you come in, unless you have a load, say, of shingles or anything like that. Um, for, uh, for, you know, a large load, uh, but anything other than that, you can come into the scale, into the, sorry, the waste site and go to the right with all your recyclings, um, hazardous waste, uh, electronics, uh, and a limit of two bags. And that's where the, the, the original attendant building will be monitoring that side uh, to keep it to the two bag and not anymore and monitor what's going into the recycling and and, uh, and the garbage bin on, on that side. Thank you, Peter. And um, is there any plans in place? We've had discussion about handling the amount of garbage, two bag uh, uh, garbage coming in that side. Is there anything new or planned to handle the amount of? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So we've been in discussions with our consultant on, on the waste sites, uh, KMBM, and they have recommended uh, a trash compactor if necessary. Uh, we currently have two spare bins uh, that we purchased last year uh, that will be in place for the two bags uh, for the regular, just the household garbage coming through the gate. Um, but if it exceeds that and uh, we can uh, investigate into a trash compactor on site um, that we can investigate whether to purchase or rent. Um, but at the start, I think it'll be a, um, a bit of a trial uh, to see how much uh, the two bag uh, limit is used and, and not the scale. So it's a, it'll be a trial at the start, but we do have two 40 yard bins available for the two bag limit. Very good. Thank you, Peter, for that info. Yeah, so I think uh, with what we've already done with the clear bag policy and trying to encourage people to recycle through that, and now this with the two bag uh, limits and knock over the scale. Um, hopefully it works that it just continues to push people to recycling and uh, and doing better on that side of it. Um, the scale will be more for the bulk stuff. So, um, and it'll be an accurate reading when, when people are uh, paying for it. So I think it's a good thing here, Peter. I'm sure there's gonna be bugs. I've said that all along. There's gonna be things happen that uh, we maybe didn't plan for, but uh, you put a lot of work into this and uh, hopefully uh, we can get something rolling here like Deputy Mayor said real soon. So, um, so I'll open up to council, uh, look for a motion to uh, approve this recommendation. Motion to approve, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, our next report here is with regards to the uh, town hall uh, modifications. Uh, Ryan, welcome. Uh, good morning, Mayor Martin and members of council. Uh, this report uh, in front of you is uh, in follow up with the work that we've been doing to get the town hall reopened. And uh, um, as you may recall, on October 20th, uh, 2020, uh, we did have a, uh, an order to remedy uh, unsafe building uh, and prohibiting occupancy. Uh, and uh, since then, uh, we've had it in the budget. And uh, most recently, Council approved uh, for us to proceed with the replacement of the accessible ramp um, at the April 5th uh, final budget meeting. So uh, we have been working with uh, Three Hills Engineering to complete the design. We're in the final uh, stages of that, so we should be able to get that out to tender soon. Um, 
just uh, I guess just looking at it and, and and being aware of the community pressures of you know not having this building uh, available for public use, uh, trying to look at ways that we can um, modify that order so we can reopen that building safely and, and temporarily uh, uh, provide that that space to the community uh, under modified conditions. So the report lists out uh, what we can do uh, to satisfy the building code in the uh, in the uh, emergency services uh, requirements uh, in terms of occupancy. Um, and then uh, basically just reducing the square footage and, and posting some information there and, and modifying the uh, exit uh, on the ramp. Uh, we could get that building open for limited uh, activities. Um, I was specifically thinking about uh, how we could get the jammers, midweek jammers back into that building. And uh, this is just some of the things that uh, we came up with and uh, worked, uh, worked with uh, our building department, our emergency services department, they're on board with this, and this is what we came up with. So, just looking for approval for from council to uh, to go ahead and make the modifications so we can uh, reopen it for modified use. All right, I think the key word there is modified. Um, yeah, thank you, Ryan. I think uh, you know, it, it, as long as everybody is okay with this, uh, um, it's uh, it would really help a lot of people. So. Um, we do have a bit of a shortage of space right now. So um, the only thing I just wonder with the recommendation, could it be added on there that, uh, you know, that we go to tender as soon as you got your report in so we don't stall that part of it? It just doesn't say that right now, that's all. Or uh, the right I guess, yeah, well, I, I just recently brought a report um, a couple of meetings ago, just letting council know updates on where we're at with the project and, um, just so council knows we are, we have received a draft version of the accessible ramp and we were satisfied with it. Our uh, acting chief building official has reviewed it and provided comments and we've sent them back. So we're just waiting for the final, um, for the final design to come in and then um, we're gonna put it out to tender. But um, as you know, these things take time like to follow our, our procurement process and, and uh, you know, it's, it's not just gonna happen um, right away like we all wish it would so uh, we have to follow process and that's why I was kind of just trying to come up with some way that we can um, accommodate the, our users and still keep the project moving at the same time. Okay thank you Ryan. Okay I'll open it up to council. Barry go ahead. Yeah through you Mr. Mayor and Ryan you've uh, talked about three hills engineering and how they can uh, fix this up on a temporary basis. Um, have they got anything in, in concrete for uh, for the permanent uh, ramp on the side of the building? Uh, through you, Mayor Martin, to Councillor Pomeroy's comment. Um, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm referring to is the replacement of the accessible ramp. And we're at the final stages of um, getting that design approved through our own um, um, chief building officials. So we're just waiting for them to make the revisions based on our chief building officials comments, and then we can proceed with uh, putting this out for public tender. I can't, another question. I can't see this taking that long and why would we spend money on something that uh, is only going to be temporary and then you cut down on the floor area. Um, you can't go on the stage and something else there um am i right or am i wrong i don't think there's any cost to it barry this is just a few uh, modifications as far as ribbing ribboning off some areas and limiting the numbers that go into the hall uh, until the ramp gets on there yeah yeah okay then how do you get to the lights you're gonna uh, you're gonna cardon off the uh, stage and if i remember right Correctly, uh, I've lived around here a long time. The light switches are all up on the stage. Yeah, well, so through you, Mayor Martin, to Council Palmer, I think common sense basically tells you that you can walk up on the stage. The rate at the bottom, at the top of the stairs, you can flip the light switches on. I think the intent was that you're not occupying that space for your activities. So if that, if you know, if that's communicated with the user groups. I think common sense, you know, if we apply that in this situation, then I, I think that we wouldn't have an issue with that. 
And who's going to limit the 60 people? Who's going to police that? Because we've already closed this, this building up. And now you come up with a, a solution that we could put people back in there. Well, they're back in there at risk. And if council approves this, they're, uh, they're approving something that, why don't we just do it right? Why don't we just put the, the new ramp on the side? Like that, I, to me, I don't know what's taking so long. The Trent Hills has got something already out there to build the specifications. Let's get at it and get it done. You know, through you, Mayor Martin, to Councillor Pomeroy. So, Council didn't approve this project until April 5th, 2022. Since then, uh, staff have um, secured an engineer and they begin uh, drafting plans. They're, like I said, we're in the final stages um, of doing that. Plus, on top of that, we're going to have to put that out for tender uh, for three to four weeks. So, that's another month. And then, depending on the results of that tender we'll have to review that and then it takes another you know it takes time to get somebody lined up depending on the schedule of the contractor who's successful in it so i'm kind of looking at it thinking you know at minimum it's probably going to be two months before anything gets started there so this was just something that i was trying to do to help the community out and relieve a little bit of the pressures that way so i think you're putting council on the spot going in the interim Oh, I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help out. That's all, Mary. I know. I understand. So, Ryan, the, so the building official, uh, CBO said it was okay and uh, like it, they can work with this and same with uh, fire. That's correct. Yes, they both they both approved this plan. We've we've had a couple of meetings about it and they're satisfied. If we make those modifications to the building, we could reopen it for temporary use. So, yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. And you're right. And I don't even know. It'll be interesting to see when we go to tender. I think you're being generous at two months uh, to get a contractor. But uh, anyways, the, so it's been looked at by staff um, and has been okayed. So it's up to council now. That's why it's here. So um, Deputy Mayor Giroux, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Uh, to Ryan, thank you for your report, Ryan. At first blemish, when I read it, I had the same concerns as Councillor Pomeroy. And I read it a couple of times and I realized that the activity on the stage meant that there will be no uh, plays or people on there square dancing when the jammers are there or whatever. And the upstairs part, all council knows that that should have been perhaps not being used because of the, 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 uh, the lower balcony. I think, believe it was Councillor Ellis that brought that up. Um, so if all the, the emergency departments and our building department is okay with this, um, why would I have a problem with it? If the jammers want to go back in there for a birthday party or whatever, um, I'll, be, I'll be quite interested in if we can open it back up to see if it even gets used. So that's, that's one thing. And uh, I'm in favor of your report. So that's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So are you moving the recommendation then, Dave? Yeah, I'll move the recommendation. It goes, it goes, okay. it goes, it goes. Thank you. All right. Um, is there a seconder for this uh, report? Okay. Um, I'm not seeing anybody seconding it. All right. So it's uh, it's not going anywhere anyway, Dave. So um, we'll just leave it at that and leave the hall closed then. Okay, we'll uh, move on. Thank you, Ryan. Good report. Thank you. We'll move on to the next uh, report here, Bob, uh, with regards to a bylaw um, mem memorandum of understanding. It's not easy to say this morning for the Burnt Dam Bridge. Yeah, through you, Mayor Martin, I'll, I'll continue practicing that. But uh, Amanda is now uh, joined us uh, in our okay. meeting. So if we can back up, uh, we planned that just so we can get back. Sure. Okay. All right. So we're back to uh, planning report number six. Six. Okay. So we'll move on. We'll go back to that. Uh, uh, welcome, Amanda. Busy person this morning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I am. <laughs> 
so okay so we're gonna we have a update to the draft uh, county uh potential plan Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, good morning, and good morning to all the members of council. Uh, and before I start, I just wanted to say thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you uh, switching around your agenda to accommodate my busy schedule. Uh, I think Daryl and Emma both owe me one, but uh, hopefully they're enjoying their vacations right now. So um, so the, the first report is with respect um, to the updated draft official plan. So this is just intended to summarize the revisions to the most recent draft. Um, following the county's consideration of comments that they did receive from the various member municipalities. Uh, although they didn't necessarily address all of the comments, the county did make a number of changes as requested by council. Uh, I won't go through the entire report or all of the comments. I did just want to point out a few um, particular points though. So regarding the creation of new lots, the maximum number of severances in the rural designation remains at two. So this is more restrictive than what's currently permitted in the township's official plan. Uh, that said, they did amend the definition of what is deemed an eligible land holding uh, to be a parcel of land as it existed 15 years uh, prior to the date of application. Uh, so this would serve to permit an increased number of severances in the rural designation, just more over a regulated or controlled period of time. Uh, the county also did not amend policies regarding new lots on private roads in the rural designation, and so this would still not be permitted in the new official plan. Uh, the county has agreed to remove Lurton um, as a settlement area. Uh, also, at the time that the report was written, there were ongoing communications uh, about certain lands uh, on the north side of Old Norwood Road in the Havelock settlement area. Um, Mr. Ty had raised concerns uh, with the county that it was quite a large portion of land that cannot be developed uh, due to significant environmental constraint uh, and due to its location. Um, removing it, though, from the settlement area boundary would create somewhat of a donut hole uh, with within the settlement area. So the county has actually agreed that although it will remain part of the settlement area, uh, that they'll put forward that it doesn't actually count towards the overall size or area of Havelock as it cannot be um, developed. Uh, on the topic of environmental constraint, it was requested that uh, unevaluated land wetlands uh, be removed from the natural core designation uh, as that mapping is not accurate. Um, they are still included, but a policy was added that will allow for scoped work to be undertaken uh, and where it's confirmed that there is no wetland, then it would not require an official plan amendment uh, to the new OP. Uh, also with respect to waterfront properties, uh, policy has been added, which would permit uh, existing developed lots to maintain their existing setback, um, providing that they don't further encroach um, into the wetland, although recognizing that further, or sorry, not the wetland, but the, the high water mark, um, but recognizing that further restrictions uh, could be identified at local um, zoning by law. Something uh, that wasn't addressed in the previous report to council in March um, is the item of excess land. So these are essentially lands within a settlement area that are currently vacant. Uh, they could be developed, but um, they're considered more land than what's necessary for growth between now and 2051, which is the, the horizon for the plan. So the province requires that excess lands are identified, <clears throat> pardon me, and then they're not permitted for development until 2051. Um, excess lands can be opened up though for development by way of official plan amendment, providing that all other lands have essentially been developed out. So the county is seeking confirmation of what um, Havelock, Belmont, and Thune would like to have identified as excess lands within Havelock. Um, they are proposing that for any excess lands within the county that they're identified as an overlay uh, schedule rather than redesignating those lands um, through land use as excess lands, which we would agree is appropriate. Uh, so the county has recommended that lands uh, on the east side of Havelock, uh, currently designated as future development, be identified as excess. Um, there was a marked up map um, that hopefully council has received as prior to the, the uh, meeting this morning, uh, illustrating that proposed area. Uh, in addition to that, the county has also indicated that lands that were added to Havelock as a result of removing Blairton should be um, identified as excess lands as well. Um, and we would consider those to be appropriate, um, but we are looking for direction from council um, on that matter. Uh, so those are just some of the key updates or changes. Um, oh yes, and I hopefully on the screen there is the, the map. Um, the, this is the recommended um, area that's hatched there that would be marked as excess lands um, for the time being in the new OP. 
Um, so as I said, these are um, just some of the, mar the marquee updates or changes. Um, there are some others highlighted in the report that I haven't necessarily touched upon, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that uh, anyone from council might have. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Um, the only question for clarification on the uh, severance, uh, the land division part of it, um, I just don't quite understand it. The uh, We used to allow three plus one retained and um, it's probably explained, but maybe you could help me with that one there. Like what's different here now? Through you, Mr. Mayor. So we actually haven't received um, that I'm aware of any like. Uh, written response from the county um, as to why they didn't um, reflect what's currently permitted in the, the township official plan or uh, why they stuck with the, the two um, new lots uh, rather than permitting three. Um, so we can certainly request that rationale or clarification from the county when we follow up with them. Um, my, uh, what I would um, presuppose is, one of the rationales or reasonings is that um, development within a rural area is to be limited. Um, and so this might be the county's uh, way of controlling for that, uh, where more lots are to be created within rural settlement areas or, or settlement areas. Um, and so this, this might be their response to that, but we haven't actually re received that, that written confirmation. So do you need a motion here at all that we uh, request that or? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, if, if we can um, amend the, the resolution um, to request clarification on this, and if there's any other um, comments that the, that the council would like to submit and seek clarification for, I can do that as well. Okay, so before I get the motion, we'll, we'll, I'll open it up to council here and see what their thoughts are. Uh, Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, you know, this, this report, uh, and the change from the county is rather, rather disturbing because when we decided to go the route we did with our official plan, uh, it was understood that we had unique requirements here and they were just supposed to stay in place. And it appears obviously that uh, the county has done their own thing and have made changes there. Um, so most definitely that needs to be clarified. Uh, as I said, uh, we had unique requirements that were supposed to stay in place. Yeah, so that's, uh, and that's the main thing that's changed here that uh, we need to get clarification on. So thank you, Councillor Ellis. Um, so any if, other... you need a motion, if you need a motion to require um, a report back uh, clarifying and making sure that the uh, the comments are uh, regarding our our uh, severances are are in place. Okay, so a motion from Councillor Ellis that we uh, get clarification on the severances and why it's not staying. Uh, Bob, you can probably word it better than me, but uh, to uh, um, get clarification of why it's it's not three plus one retained. So as we had before. Um, so that's the motion. Do I have a sec? Okay, uh, Bob, go ahead. Sorry, if I may ask, <clears throat> may ask a question. Um, sorry, Amanda. In in your report, it does state. Uh, of course, I can't find it now. It's here. Um, the definition has been revised to a parcel and has existed ten years prior. Therefore, a parcel no use before that. In the updated draft county official plan, the number of severances permitted in the rural designation has not been revised. Yes, so uh, to clarify that um, it's been kept at what they had initially been to in the, in the, the drafted OP. No. It says, therefore, a parcel of land may ultimately be eligible for more than two severances. Yeah, so sorry. Years elapsed between the granting of such. So it looks like the provision of the number of years between severances perhaps has changed, but they're still allowing three plus one. 
That's the way I read it. That's the way I read it too. Okay, so maybe just a clarification, a motion to clarify the, to make sure that we're keeping that, I guess, is uh, okay. um, what, we don't want to let this go if it's not, if if you're reading it that way and somebody's not, we need it black and white, um, three plus one retained. Three, Mr. Mayor, if I, if I might um, try to, to clarify. So, uh, and I apologize for the, the ambiguity with how it's written. So currently um, in the township's official plan, uh, the, uh, in a, the rural designation, uh, there can be three new lots created plus the one retained, um, but that's on the basis of a lot being defined as uh, sometime in February, I can't remember the exact date, but 1990, essentially. Right. Um, so what um, the county had um, provided in their um, updated plan back in uh, March or April of this year was that only two um, new lots in the rural designation um, could be created um, for land holding as of 1990. So what they have um, done, uh, although council requested that it be increased to the three as is currently in the official plan, they've left it at being two new lots in the rural designation plus the retained. Um, so they didn't change what they had written in the March, April um, official plan uh, that they were proposing. Uh, so it still reads as two plus um, two new lots plus one retained. Uh, what they did change was what's defined as an eligible parcel of land so it removes that um, that year 1990 and just says 15 years so that means in theory that a lot could actually receive over time more than three new lots it just wouldn't be at one given time so right now at one given time you can do three they're proposing two but it would become eligible for another two in 15 years. So, sorry, I, I apologize that that wasn't clear in the report. Hopefully that's clear. Uh, again, we can still seek that clarification and rationale from the county though. Yeah, I think the 15 years is a long time. So I guess basically what we're saying here is we're going to keep what we had. Councillor Ellis, go ahead. You made the motion. <laughs> yes, and I would, like, I would like the motion to be a, lear, a little clearer on our request, we're not asking, my motion would state, we're not asking for clarification. We're asking to assure that our three plus one are, is in place in the official plan as we had requested when we, um, we started this process. Okay. Uh, I'm, not looking, I, I'm gonna state not looking for clarification, but assuring that three plus one is in place. Okay, thank you. That would be my motion, Mr. Mayor. So we have a motion on the floor. I'll look for a seconder for that. I'll second the motion with a comment. Deputy Mayor Duro seconds it with a comment. And Go I ahead. Don't want and I, I certainly don't want to muddy the water because I'm not a planner. Um, but we want it as it is now at three. In the county, what they're actually saying is, you can have two, and in 15 years, you can have two more. Is that not correct? Yeah. So we're throwing away a lot, perhaps. But anyway, I have second the motion. Okay. All right. So we have a motion on the floor, duly seconded. So is there any other questions? Right. Any questions around the motion? All in favor of the motion? So that's carried. Okay, um, Amanda, so did you want to carry on with that or is there anything else? Okay, I'll make it up. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, with respect to, um, at least with the, the county update, as long as there's no other comments with some of the changes, then um, uh, I can certainly follow up with the um, county with respect to consents um, for new lots. Uh, my only other, um, if there's no other comments on that, my only other request would be for direction with respect to excess lands. Okay. All right. Any comments on that, Council? Excess lands. I think that's a good thing. Uh, that that was the one that it moves it into an area that we would probably more likely to use. Is that right, Amanda? Through you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, so yes, the excess lands would form part of the settlement um, boundary, um, but they would just be essentially placed on hold for development. 
um, until the existing vacant lands within the settlement area are developed out. Um, it's intended to um, ensure efficient uh, development within what can be already utilized rather than sort of sprawling throughout the, the settlement area. Um, and so, yes, these, these lands would stay part of the settlement area. Um, they just would be put on hold for development until 2051 or until such time as the township requires their use. And that was the main thing is that uh, we probably will need that land, but it probably won't be where it was. So that'll give us an opportunity to move it at any time. Uh, three, Mr. Mayor. So, um, with respect to to moving the land, not necessarily. Like, so the the township, or sorry, the county has approved um, the request for the settlement boundary um, adjustments uh, for Havelock and, and Blairton. So those are accepted, and then the excess lands is in addition to that. So um, these lands currently uh, are designated as future development. And so they would be marked essentially as what they refer to at the province level as excess lands. So they're just there, it would mean that there's no development uh, on those lands until 2051, um, unless there's an official plan amendment to allow for it um, on, on those particular lands that are marked as future development. So it would restrict development on those areas. It is a requirement of the province. The township does have to, to declare um, some lands as excess lands which they uh, so i guess essentially the county is asking which lands that the township would like to see um labeled as excess and not not needing or not uh, eligible for development in the near future um, and so they propose what's already designated as future development because they can't currently be developed anyways so we have a we have a huge section just east of the village uh, that's uh, future development um what's the process if somebody wanted to move on that next year is it just an amendment to put in or so if somebody wanted to um amend that next year and for example the um new official plan were in place then they would not be eligible to do so <clears throat> pardon me so that would tie that up for a lot of years yes through you mr mary yes it would okay um, go ahead, Councillor Ellis. No, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm I'm having a, a little bit of trouble with this certain topic here. Uh, if we, if we listen to our developers and our builders in our municipality, it's a quite a common comment that there's a shortage of building lots, and so I'm having a little a little trouble um accepting this uh, proposal from the county restricting us unless uh we re unless we um amend what's suggested by the county it's almost like we're we're restricting building uh unless it's amended for 50 years or till 2050. um Unless I hear different things than the rest of my council for, uh, members, uh, that's a common that's a common um, statement that there's a shortage of good building lots, and and what we're proposing here to put in place that we're restricting more uh, unless we want to amend it. Am I out to lunch here? Or? No, you're you're totally right. I think that was one of the things that I liked about it when it was showing in blue on there for future development. I didn't realize it would be tied up until 51. I know this is a provincial thing. It's not a county thing. This is a provincial thing. Um, and that's something that maybe we need to talk a little more about because uh, um, the allotted number right now are with Cavan and uh, Selwyn and, and Norwood. And we had a little bit there. Um, but that being said, I didn't know it was going to be tied up until 51. That, that kind of worries me because like Councillor Ellis is saying, we're, there is a shortage in this area for develop, development. So to tie it up or to go through another process, um, it's pretty inviting right now um, to have some, some areas shown for future development. Um, but by locking it up, and creating a problem there. I, I'm just kind of a little worried about passing this today. Um, there might be some more discussion with the county on this to see if we can get a little more um, of the number. This is a numbers thing throughout the 
you know, it's a provincial numbers thing as far as the growth area. Um, and that's something that we need to make sure that we've got a, at least a little bit of area for growth. We may not be growing as fast as some of the others closer to the GTA, but uh, it's coming. So we don't want to lock ourselves up. So is there any way of dealing with that, Amanda? Um, is it, this, I would think at the time before we receive this, we should speak about that to the county too. Uh, so three, <clears throat> pardon me. So uh, sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, a very inopportune time. Um, so three, Mr. Mayor. So I, I think in this respect, and so these, the, then as you said, it's a numbers game, and um, this is something that's been directed by the province. So the county was uh, required to undertake as part of their um, official plan update um, a growth. Um, forecast analysis, which was completed by Hemson. And so these are the, the numbers that um, Hemson came forward with. And so that's where some of this is going. So I, I would suggest that if there's concern with the amount of area that would be um, tied up through identifying it as excess lands, that um, in addition to uh, wanting to assure that there's the three lots for um, uh, new lots as part of the consent policies that we communicate to the county that there is significant concern with the, the amount of land that would be identified um, as excess lands as, as required or, or indicated by Hemson's study uh, and that um, prior to confirming uh, what the township would like to identify as being excess that there be further communication with the, the county on this matter. Okay, because there's been a lot of discussion at the county around this. <clears throat> By seeing the future development, I thought it was okay, but by saying that it's locked up for that long a time, um, yeah. that's locking us up. And I guess, you know, maybe I should have caught it sooner, but it's, uh, yeah, that worries me. I think that needs to be addressed. And sorry, Mr. Mayor, if I, I might uh, further clarify. So um, the future development lands um, didn't necessarily have to all be. Um, recognized as excess lands. And I think actually on this map, some of the some of the land might, which is actually designated as future development is not um, is not marked up as as excess lands. This is just a reflection of of what um, Hemson uh, indicated numbers of acres that Havelock would need to identify as excess lands. And so um, rather than um, suggesting that, for example, there's quite an, a large area of vacant residential land within Havelock, rather than suggesting that be uh, the excess lands that the county suggested that the most appropriate place to put this would be what's already marked as future development. It's not as easily developed and so um, not um, not prohibiting development where where there's greater potential in the, the nearer future. Um, so if, if I'm understanding council um, correctly, the comments, it's, it's um, in part also just the, the sheer quantity of acreage that would be um, tied up through this process. Yeah, so I, I think that would be probably the safest way today would be to receive this document and let you work on what we've asked and uh, bring it back at a future meeting just to be safe because we don't want to give the wrong impression to the county that we're happy with it because we're not. And it's not the county, like I say, they'll have to deal with the province to work on these numbers. And uh, it's a big process. It's uh, We're only allotted so many uh, so many houses or properties in in this area of the county, not this area, but the county as a whole. So they're spreading those numbers around and we just wanna make sure we get our fair share there. Um, and to go along with, you know, what future growth is gonna to mean um, to Eastern Ontario as you leave the GTA. It's pretty obvious right now that it's growing, you know, closer you are to the GTA, you're expanding huge um, and it, kind of feathers out as you get farther away and that's where we're at right now but that being said 2051 is a long time away so uh, uh we need to deal with it uh, once again more clarification on this but i think for today if we just receive this report and let you work on what we're looking for there that would probably be beneficial to us what's council's thoughts councillor webb go ahead <laughs> Put me on the spot, Jim. I, oh, I thought your hand was up. I just um, Sorry. a motion to receive the report would be uh, appropriate for now. Oh, I'll ask the question. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Yes, through, you, through you and Martin to Amanda. Amanda, sorry if I've missed this. I, I've just been reading, and I, 
I'm a little bit confused as to how this reads. So in the final paragraph of excess lands of the excess land section, mm -hmm. it states in accordance with the direction of the growth plan, the county is proposing to identify excess lands within an overlay. Language is also proposed to be included in the official plan directing that at such time as the greenfield lands within the settlement area are approaching full development, an official plan amendment will be required to remove the restrictions for excess lands and open these lands for development. So when I read that, it doesn't tell me that I have to wait till 2051. It's telling me that as we're approaching um, full development, we can get an official plan amendment to allow more development. But perhaps I'm reading that wrong. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no, you're not reading that wrong at all. Um, so, so those are the two options. Essentially, what would happen is in the growth or in the um, official plan, it would be um, designated as excess lands and therefore prohibited for from use until 2051. Um, but as I mentioned, if if the if all of the lands are developed out, then an official plan amendment would would take place. But in the meantime, until those lands are considered developed out, the available developable lands, these excess lands would not be eligible for development. So if an individual came forward um, wanting to um, have some sort of development within those lands that are marked as excess lands between now uh, and 2051, assuming that there's other developable land within the, the, within the settlement area, they would not be prohibited to do so. If I can ask a follow-up question through you, yeah. Mayor Martin, do we have any sense of what stage we're at with the lands being developed at this point? How long is it gonna take us to get there? I guess is my question, realistically. So through you, Mr. Mayor, so, um, Essentially what the, and this is again, this is all on the basis of the report from Hemson. So Hemson has through their analysis determined that um, the lands that are within Havelock currently that are designated for some form of land use already um, are efficient or sufficient, sorry, sufficient for uh, what they project growth to be within Havelock. And so they've indicated that what's already currently designated as future development within Havelock won't be uh, necessary for, for use or development until after 2051. And so that means then that's why Havelock is considered to have excess lands. And so for ease, the county is recommending that those future development lands be marked as excess. Um, so that's all based off of Hemson's um, growth analysis. Okay, Bob, go ahead. One more, one more follow up to you, Mayor Martin. So if, if Havelock reaches the growth project, projection sooner than Hemson predicted, those lands will become developable prior to 2051. Through you, Mr. Mayor, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So exactly, if if Havelock exceeds that growth analysis, if Hemson is, is incorrect in that analysis and um, Havelock essentially um, builds out, develops up all of the available land currently existing and designated for some land use, then that's when the official plan amendment would occur to open up that future development um, land on the, the east side of, of the settlement area. Okay, Bob. Thank you, that clarifies. So we do not have to wait till 2051. No, no not- The level of activity, no. Right. Correct. Through you, Mr. Ray. Yes, exactly. Depending on the level of activity, you wouldn't have to. It just, in the meantime, it does limit um, anybody who might want to have an interest in some of those lands. So I know the county's in a hurry to get this thing passed. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a date in mind. I think that's why it's on the agenda today. But I just want to make sure we're all comfortable with everything that's uh, on here. Um, so number two on the recommendation is that we um, support the updated draft and uh, forward a resolution to the County of Peterborough. That's the part I'm kind of leery on, Bob. Um, I just think we want to make sure we're hundred percent sure of what we're doing here. And uh, um, 
you know, if everybody's happy, I'll take a motion one way or the other, but I just think we should receive it for today and clarify with the county, but that maybe I'm just being overly cautious. What's council's thoughts? Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I think uh, our um, severances and locks and, and uh, you know, three severed and one retained, I think that should be should be fixed up before we uh, go anywhere. I think Amanda said that she could get in touch with the county and uh, express our concerns that we have. And I think that probably is the way we should go and see how the county uh, retaliates or, or they agree with us. I don't know, I, I hope they would agree, but anyway, yeah. we can have an answer that way through, through Amanda. Yeah, so I think that's, uh, so we do have to have some clarification already. So it's not going anywhere anyway today. So it is just a motion to receive today's report and get the information that we, through the motion. I'll do that. Okay, moved by uh, Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Ellis. Other for the question? question. Yeah. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my motion prior, could I ask uh, CAO Bob to read my motion? It was regarding the uh, three yeah, uh, the severances. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So uh, the motion was that uh, severances be, be retained as per the current policy in HPM as three plus one, um, and that this be uh, retained in the new official plan of Peter County. I'll fix it. It'll sound better than that, but that's what it is. <laughs> that's the gist of it. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. I just wonder if maybe Eric has any questions on uh, no? Um, you, if you do, now's the time. Through through to you, uh, Mayor Martin. No, I I absolutely defer to the expertise of our planning consultants and I absolutely second everything that she has uh, Amanda has said uh, the with regards to the severances I do definitely think that um, it uh, it is a reflection of provincial policy as the growth plan kind of does make um, development over in the rural country um, a little bit more difficult in favor of urban um, and and I think the uh, county's approach um, is trying to maintain that kind of messaging that the province has been given. So, uh, so um, again, like I said, I kind of defer to the expertise of our consultants and uh, and second everything that they have kind of mentioned. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So, so we have. If I might, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Thank you for that area. I, I think you touched on uh, a subject that all of us maybe not understand. That this is only a draft policy. And the lowest Peterborough County is in, and all the townships that are involved in it, it's ours, and it will be, mm -hmm. but it still has to be approved by the province. And yeah. this is the thing, they're trying to create it so the province won't hold it up for another year or a year and a half. They want it to look good for the province and, and as you said, area. The rural, they make it more difficult for rural than they do for rural city. So they're trying, they're trying to they're trying to make it easy for the province to pass it so it's not held up. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Webb, go ahead. I just had a question for you, Dave. Um, the last I heard about this, it looked it sounded like the county was going towards expanding the number of severances. Was it very wrong in terms of they're gonna looking at five? Some, I, I can't. I'm just wondering why we went back to because everything I'm seeing around us is smaller homes. You know what I mean? Probably to me, it, which will lead to smaller lots eventually. So I mean, if that's the way we're going, uh, given the, the economy we're facing right now, right? People don't have the money. I, I don't see why we're limiting the number of, like I, I see it in a way, but at the same time, you're limiting it to big developers and whatnot to do the building, right? So if some guy has a farm and wants to section 
maybe just for his family, maybe just for his kids, three or four kids, right? Well, he can only do two. And then they're going to have to go off and buy from Peterborough Homes or whatever, right? Not that that's a bad thing, but I mean, you know, what in terms of... Once again, sir, you would be there. Um, you, you're 100% correct as far as I'm concerned. Um, it comes back to rural. They don't want us building in the rural. Um, so... Yeah, there's we had three thing. lots. We want to retain for three lots. We'll just stay with that. I think the county gave us a trade off. They said you can have two lots, and in 15 years, you can have two more. Yeah. Oh, I, I understand. I'm just saying it's, and I get the game that they're trying to keep, and they want the, the development to be, as I already said, urban. But I mean, we're getting to the point where, you know, if you go up around Peterborough and some of these places, they're they're overbuilt already. So you're going to have to me, you're going to have to make that move, right? And I don't know what the pushback, I'd like to hear from the province, what, why, why is their pushback in terms of urban, rural, right? Like I, I can see certain points of it, but I mean, things change. And I think it's time for these upper levels, upper levels of government to, to change with the people, right? So it's going to have to change. I, I think that'll happen, Art. Um, so I think for today, though, um, if we could look at our three, what we had, and uh, um, the five won't, that was somebody talked about that, but there is some in our county that are still only one. Um, one of the things we've been unique about is our three. We're the highest in the county as far as uh, severances, and we want to keep it that way. So I think the motion will take care of that as far as clarifying that with the, um, with the county. Um, so the motion took care of that. And the other motion is that we receive this and, and I uh, will get the information when it comes back anyways, but it's something to keep on top of for all of council. Um, keep an eye on this. This is huge all over the place, like the province wide. So, um, but the motion on the floor right now is that we uh, um, receive the presentation today and, and we'll, Amanda will get back to us with the county's uh, um, thoughts on the three versus two. Um, that will come back at a future meeting. So, all in favor of the motion? And that's carried. All right, then. So, we do have one more report here, Amanda, with regards to uh, Bill 109. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. So this next report is intended to inform council uh, about the Bill 109 changes, uh, some of which will be in effect as of July 1st, and others uh, which are being more slowly rolled out um, to be in effect in January 2023. Uh, so Bill 109, also known as the More Homes for Everyone Act, initially had a commenting period that was to end uh, April 29th uh, of this year. Uh, however, that legislation was uh, fast-tracked, to say the least, and actually received royal assent uh, before that date on April 14th. Um, so there are a number of impacts to the Planning Act as a result of Bill 109. I'm not going to go through all the legislative details um, or changes in detail, rather. Uh, I really just want to highlight the, the key impacts to Planning Act applications uh, and what we're recommending in terms of mo moving forward at this time. So one of the most important changes uh, that council will see is the ability of an applicant to receive a refund on their application fees uh, if a decision is not rendered on a zoning bylaw amendment application within the timelines that are laid out by the Planning Act. So for a zoning bylaw amendment, council currently has 90 days to make a decision. And then if that's not met, there's a, a graduated schedule um, of fees to be paid back to the applicant or property owner. So an impact from uh, those changes will be that pre-consultation process will need to be enhanced uh, to ensure that processing times are minimal once an application is received. Um, and so in discussions with other municipalities, um, a lot of them are proposing uh, a really enhanced or rigorous uh, pre-consultation process, uh, which is going to include um, probably sort of like a phased pre-consultation, but requiring technical studies um, in advance of receiving uh, a formal application. Uh, and even requiring that those technical studies be peer reviewed in advance and addressed before a township will receive a formal application. Uh, the County of Peterborough, um, as I mentioned, or is actually is in the, the report, I didn't bring it up. Uh, they are including necessary policies in the new official plan uh, to support municipalities in acting those requirements through bylaw. Um, 
the county is also uh, proposing providing there's interest amongst the various townships that they'll also implement uh, an official plan amendment now or in the near future anyways um, to put those policies into the existing official plan while um, we're waiting on the province to approve the new official plan and that will allow um, townships um, the opportunity to um, have the official plan policy to support um, preparation or enhancement of, of pre-consultation bylaws to require, like, as I said, such things as a peer review before receiving a formal application. Uh, I would note that this um, for Havoc, as you currently have your own official plan, this will probably require you to consider uh, an amendment to your official plan as well uh, in conjunction with that. Uh, so the changes to zoning bylaw amendments, uh, it's not going to be in effect until January 2023. So there is a bit of time to work on the necessary changes and get the correct processes in order. Um, similar refund policies are going to be in place for site plan approval. However, the changes with respect to site plans uh, will be commencing much sooner. So July, July 1st. Um, the site plan approval process is going to become a little bit more structured in that a township will actually deem a site plan application complete. Um, and then within 30 days, uh, if it's considered incomplete, then a notice needs to be issued to the property owner or to the applicant. Uh, there will be legislation in place, though, so that a uh, municipality can more easily require uh, technical studies um, or peer review prior to receiving the formal application, similar to zoning bylaw amendment applications. Uh, other changes being imposed for site plan control are that council would no longer be the delegated authority for approving site plans and site plan agreements. So council does need to instead appoint by bylaw um, an individual to re represent the municipality to do so. Um, so we're um, proposing that I be the, the CAO clerk, um, but um, that is certainly up to council's discretion. Um, so I. So I think um, those are perhaps some of the most important changes that will uh, impact the planning processes for the township. Uh, there are several recommendations outlined in the report. Uh, one of them I just mentioned, uh, which is to pass uh, a delegation by law, um, or sorry, delegation of authority by law, um, so that um, instead of council being the delegated authority for site plans, um, that there's an individual, um, it could be the CAO uh, clerk, um, it certainly can be another individual or employee um, of the township. Uh, or another designate. Uh, we've recommended somebody more so with binding authority because there is an agreement that would be signed and then registered on title. Uh, coupled with this, the, the township um, should also review any site plan control guidelines um, and develop um, more comprehensive procedures to ensure that applications um, are being received at a higher standard just to limit any back and forth um, discussions that might happen between township staff and applicants um, where there might be lacking information or details just to ensure that we're not exceeding the um, timelines that the Planning Act outlines. Uh, Pre-consultation will also become even more important, uh, as I've mentioned. Um, can you please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe Havelock currently has a, a mandatory pre-consultation bylaw. Uh, if not, then certainly preparation of such a bylaw um, would allow the township to stipulate requirements prior to submission of a formal application. If there is one in place, then certainly um, reviewing that just to make sure that it is very comprehensive and outlines um, all of the procedures and requirements for pre-consultation would be um, recommended. Uh, there's also mentioned in the report of a, a deeming complete bylaw. Uh, many townships have a bylaw of this nature which delegates authority um, to uh, again to a staff member rather than to council. I believe Havelock Belmont Methuen already has such a bylaw in place um, but it might be necessary again to enhance that bylaw to more clearly again outline the steps uh, required um, to deem an application complete. Um, so uh, all these changes to these bylaws or creation of these really enhanced bylaws for site plan control, uh, pre-consultation, uh, and also deeming complete would be intended to set up expectations for applicants, uh, also protect um, the township because of these new legislative requirements, uh, and then also provide staff with a, a guide essentially for how to implement these um, process changes. Uh, and this would apply to any Planning Act applications uh, captured through the mandatory pre-consultation, including uh, but more importantly, uh, zoning bylaw amendments and site plan approval. Um, so I, I know that's a lot to take in. Um, and a lot of what it comes down to, uh, unfortunately, is pushing much of the process um, that currently happens through formal application to the pre-consultation stage. Um, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm, I don't necessarily, necessarily see 
uh, where this quickens the process, uh, just seems to um, create a lot of additional administration and processing at a different time uh, in, in the usual process that we see. Uh, if there is any benefit, then hopefully it will serve to just clarify what the um, internal process is and, and hopefully provide those that guidance for staff. Um, we do anticipate there's going to be more information that comes from the province or, or changes to some of this legislation. Um, and as municipalities start looking at these changes, um, certainly this is going to evolve over time. Uh, and because of that, um, certainly it's going to be important to ensure progress is being made um, and that council is being kept up to speed on what that progress is. And particularly if there's any uh, direction from council necessary, um, if there's going to be new bylaws or, or processes implemented and certainly for council's input and consideration. Uh, there may also be certain items, um, for example, uh, who's most appropriate for delegating authority that could be um, could require legal counsel to weigh in as well. Um, and as well, because these bylaws, um, so pre-consultation bylaws, for example, are a mechanism or a tool that's been in place or, or possible to be in place for many um, municipalities, but they're going to be stretched a little bit further than the municipalities typically have had. And so we just wanna make sure that they're enforceable as well. Um, so certainly it's going to be sort of an all hands on deck team effort um, along the way. Um, that is about all I want to say or, or communicate to council in terms of these changes and, and what sort of to expect in the coming months, um, but I am happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Amanda. There is a ton of recommendations in there, so I'm not sure uh, at the end of the day, you just need a recommendation that we receive or a motion that we receive this, or is this uh, um, that we approve the recommendations? Uh, three, Mr. Mayor. So, if it's easiest to um, to pass a, a resolution to receive and and um, approve the recommendations that are outlined in the report, I think that would be sufficient. Um, if Council has any questions or concerns, though, and would like to refine them, then we can certainly do that here. Sure. Okay. Then I'll open up the Council. So, uh, um, Dave, do you have? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, there's ten recommendations here. Um, and all we've had a chance to read through all of this. And Amanda, thank you for your presentation. Uh, on January the 1st, 2023, any changes regarding delegations of approval of authority come into force. In fact, that's only a couple of weeks away. So if we're going to have to approve all these recommendations, it's good. Um, it, it's easy to sit here and make a motion to approve the recommendations, but the work that is involved behind it after that is horrendous. So I don't even know if it's possible to have it done or not. I looked at my CEO through you. Uh, I don't know. I know we have to do this, Amanda. We have to get rolling here, but uh, there's a lot of work to be done by all our staff. And they're already worked. So, uh, you can comment on that if you like. I don't know. Yeah. Go ahead, Amanda. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I, I agree. There's a lot. So I, I would say um, in terms of moving forward, the most pressing is certainly the delegation of authority by law. Um, so certainly um, our recommendation would be that such a bylaw, uh, specifically for delegation of authority for site plan approval, be brought back to the next meeting of council. Um, and as well, if necessary, um, a bylaw making pre-consultation uh, for Planning Act applications mandatory uh, to that same meeting. And I think that would serve to address the most immediate um, concerns that are going to take place on July 1st. Um, everything else, although certainly we don't want um, lingering, um, will happen over the course, I think, of, of a, a few months. Um, certainly we, uh, the township will want these things in place um, prior to um, January and, and sort of underway or being implemented already. Yeah. Um, but, but certainly I think the two most pressing would be the delegation of authority and mandatory pre-consultation pre bylaw. And, and then in terms of further direction, um, if, if council wants to um, proceed with um, staff review, Aria, you're not getting off the hook, you're going to definitely be helping with this stuff. So um, certainly if um, staff and, and ourselves as township planning consultants, um, if, if council would like us to review the 
um, processing guidelines for pre consultation, uh, site plan control, and uh, deeming complete, and then bring forward necessary um, proposed bylaws at a future meeting. It doesn't have to be at the very next meeting. And hopefully that might help um, sort of streamline what's, what's required moving forward. Okay, through you, Mayor Martin, thank you for that, Amanda. So I don't know how many motions I'm gonna to have to uh, put forward here, but the first one would be in regards to the approval authority for January. And with that, I will look to our CEO. Can I also add to that uh, the next one that Amanda spoke to? Uh, yep, through you, Mayor Martin, you can certainly do that. Um, I might suggest that we we move the resolution to uh, approve the 10 recommendations with a further note that they will be done in a timely manner uh, as required. So they're not all going to be done for the next meeting. Uh, but we do uh, do July 1st. We can certainly address those. Uh, Ari and I had a discussion about this this morning. Um, I think we're just going to have to tackle this a piece at a time. Uh, but I think if the resolution indicates that, then then we can proceed. So the motion, Bob, would be that we that we approve the recommendations as a the ten recommendations, but a timeline on them. Right. Uh, we we proceed. Yeah, as required. As required. Is that okay with you, Dave? That's fine with me, Mr. Mayor. I'll make that recommendation. Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Duro that we uh, approve the recommendations uh, and we'll get to them in a timely manner. <laughs> um, is there a second? Uh, motion, Mr. Mayor. You're seconding that, Councillor Ellis? Yes. Okay. Any questions around the motion? All right, I'll call a question. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Sounds like thank you and I are going to be busy. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I think we will be. Sure. And thank you again to everybody. It was nice to see everyone's faces again. And um, I appreciate, again, you you're adjusting the agenda for me. So thank you and have a great day, everyone. You too. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. All right. We, so we have two things left in uh, staff reports for follow up action. And then maybe we can take a uh, five or 10 minute break. But uh, um, the next uh, item when we go back to the original agenda is uh, an environmental grant program that Bob has prepared something there. Bob, did you want to speak to it? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So uh, action report uh, number four is dealing with the uh, memorandum of, of understanding. So this report recommends that the township uh, sign and authorize the memorandum of understanding with the County of Peterborough and the Central Eastern Area Snowmobile Region uh, with respect to the rehabilitation of Burnt Dam Bridge. Oh, sorry, I jumped over one. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. On my <laughs> okay. So, I wanted to skip over it too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, with regards to the Burnt Dam Bridge, uh, any questions or comments from council? It's uh, pretty straightforward. All right. And that, so that bylaw up. is later in the meeting, Mayor Martin. Okay. All right, then. So we'll just receive the report. Yep. Motion to receive. Moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux and seconded by Councilor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay. Um, okay, so now I'm back on track. So number five, uh, environmental grant, Bob? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, so at the council meeting of June 7, council received uh, correspondence from the Lake Cashabog Residents Association requesting a matching grant of $1,000 from the Environmental Grant Program to assist with the Trent University study of fan wart that will take place this summer. Uh, in response to that request, Council requested that we outline criteria of the environmental uh, grant program. That, that criteria is presented here for Council's approval. Okay. 
yeah, a lot of work went into that. I've been busy this week, Bob. Um, yes. So what's council's thoughts here? Deputy Mayor Drill, go ahead. Through you again, Mayor Martin. First of all, I want to thank Bob and staff for doing this report. It's well done. I think they taught, touched on every possible thing they can touch on. <clears throat> I think we're in a position to not only support this, but, but uh, push it forward. Um, waterways uh, are life line so and work is a big problem and there needs to be more study on it it's not just about kosh lake it's about all lakes and uh like i said i support this this grant uh program and i know what's going to expand down the road for sure but uh at this stage in the game i'm prepared to uh, move the recommendation all right Thank you. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Groh that we uh, approve the recommendation and, and use this uh, um, formula here. So is there a seconder for that? Councillor Webb, seconding that. Any questions or comments around this? Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, $10,000 per year. I thought we were just doing this once and uh, maybe distributing a thousand dollars to the if if required to each lake in the that we had 10 10 lakes for a thousand dollars each and further to that I see this funding will be distributed on a first come first serve basis so if uh, say Kosh Lake gets it this year they make application next year because they're the first ones to apply, do they get it again next year? And you know, it, it's a, it sounds like a good program, but it, I I think it's got to be uh, equal to all all lakes, not just. So I think that's how it's addressed with the thousand uh, um, dollars. You know, and whether everybody takes advantage of this, it may end up carrying over for another year, as far as the whoever uses this thing but there's an opportunity for we always look at how it was described in the uh in the budget process as we have 10 major lakes in our township so there is an opportunity that 10 lakes could take advantage of a thousand dollars to help towards uh, some environmental issues that are going on whether they do that or not it's going to be another story is there's some that may never use it but that being said um it's there for them and we'll see how it goes this year. But uh, I haven't seen any other applications come in. Have you, Bob? No, through you, Mayor Martin, I've not. Okay, further to my question, or yes, first come, first serve basis. Um, I got no problem with the thousand dollars a year grant, but there should be, if next year, before, uh, you know, if Kosh Lake applies again, let's say Belmont Lake did, but Kosh Lake got in before Belmont, um, we can't we can't take those people again there. You know, it should be, if all other lakes have an opportunity, <clears throat> so they can all get, <clears throat> excuse me, all benefit by this grant, then it goes back to start over again. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. So Bob, there probably could have been a date in there, like if it, you know it's open till July or something like that, and if they haven't used it by then, it might open up again. That way, everybody has a chance. You can think about that, but it, that would help maybe if uh, I don't see a lot of people coming for it. But uh, it's nice to see this one here is going to benefit a lot of lakes because it, it all flows downhill. So. Um, but is there an opportunity, Bob, to have something in there to clarify the uh, um, the first come first serve that after say July first, it's uh, it opens back up again if need be. Well, through you, Mayor Martin, uh, just to address some of the comments from Councillor Pomeroy, um, the grant was uh, established in the budget at budget time, 
for a total of ten thousand uh, dollars. The criteria was not defined, and that's what this report attempts to do. Um, as far as who's going to use the money and when, it's available. It's really more project based than lake based. If it's a legitimate environmental program, then council can certainly review it. And if you choose to suggest that one lake is repeating an application, then it can be denied. Um, yeah. We don't know that we have no history on this. So I think this is a pilot program to see how it goes. And we can certainly review it again at the end of the year and at budget time. Um, and if we're finding that there's duplication or one area is consuming most of the grant, then perhaps we can address that. Um, but I would certainly suggest we wait to see what comes forward and then evaluate it. Yeah, that's right. We do have the final say at the end of it. So that works, Bob. Barry, go ahead. Final yeah. comment. Yeah, the, um, the first line too, a total fund amount has been established at $10,000 per year. Well, if, if we're only giving out a thousand or two thousand a year, I don't think it has to be uh, ten thousand dollars a year put into a fund. So anyway, I think Hart has another question here. Okay, hey, go Just, ahead. Hart. Well, quick to Barry's last point. Um, it's a good point. It's something I brought up with Bob in terms of maybe we could use that as a top up at the ten thousand, right? But we kind of discussed that too, and we thought that maybe. I think that once this, once some of the lakes get information about what we're doing here, we will see more applications from Belmont, Cordova, these other lakes. They're just not aware of what we're doing. But uh, Councillor Pomeroy also makes a good point. Excuse me, a good point in terms of we don't want one lake, uh, you know, hogging all all the grant money here. So, but I think with the council giving oversight to the process and having to give final approval, that kind of thing uh, won't hopefully won't happen. So. So, so those will be things that'll be dealt with at budget time. I think, like Bob said, it's uh, and it might be just it probably would be just a top up. I couldn't see ten thousand dollars a year going into something. I don't think anybody would see that, especially if it's not being used to its fullest. So, Bob, go ahead. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So that's correct. Uh, just further to the comments from Councillor Webb and Councillor Pomeroy, the ten thousand dollar number comes from our budget discussion. That's what was allocated into the environmental account. The environmental grant account. So whether that becomes a top up or how we choose to administer it, again, we'll review at the end of the year when budget comes and we'll see how, how it's going. But absolutely, it can be a top up and it's a $10,000 grant account. From OMPF. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. Okay. Was, it, was it applied or was it granted for one year? established in the budget for one year uh, well through you mayor martin if council chooses to remove it you can do that at the next budget cycle no no i'm, I'm just asking because if you accumulate ten thousand dollars a year and it's not being spent then you have a surplus it's it's there for a good reason i, I go along with that but if there's only five people apply for it in a year you got five thousand dollars left over so you're gonna put another 10 with that? So you have 15? No. No, no. no. Through you, Mayor Martin, the wording says the total fund amount has been established at ten thousand dollars per year. Per year. So that's the fund. It's ten thousand dollars. It would stay at ten thousand, like Hart said, it would be topped up if need right. be um, to get it back to like next year. It might only be a thousand dollars has to go into it. And then if council finds that it's not being used, it'll come back and they may pull it out. But uh I think like Hart said, it's gonna be a lot of people using this thing once they get onto it. I have announced it at a few of the Lake Association meetings. Um, anyway. Um, I'm not disputing Council that. Then. What's that? I say, I'm not disputing that. I, yeah. you know, it's a good fund. It's, I just want some clarifications. Yeah, it's, it's so hopefully, uh, yeah, like you say, um, so, Total fund amount, I guess, like Bob's saying, is ten thousand. So that's it'll be capped at ten thousand, um, and it'll be reviewed every year at budget time, anyway. So um, I think it's covered there. But uh, Councillor Ellis, go ahead, and then we'll. 
follow up question. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I think Councillor Pomeroy's concern and rightfully so was the language first come first serve. And I think if we deal with that part and as it gets uh, out to the other lake associations and they hopefully utilize it, but I think that was the concern and uh, rightfully so. Yeah. Okay. So, so there is a motion on the floor that we approve this and uh, um, it was moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux and seconded by Councillor Webb. Question. Go ahead. So we're approving this with like, we're approving it with a top up with the 10,000 being a top up or? Well, that's. So, so I, you, Mayor Martin, I can adjust the language. <clears throat> the total funds amount will be capped at $10,000 yeah. per year. Okay, thank I'll you. I'll add capped in there. Yeah, thank you. And if I may ask council, if you wish to change the first come first serve, please provide direction. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, the monies will be allocated. Um, oh God, Victor, what was gonna say on the first come first serve basis? <laughs> there you go, he's into it. Uh, uh, if you, if you well, know, that will be allocated to applicants. Um, clearly. Well, like, on the first couple of things that. Yeah. Um, that council's discretion. In which they've applied. And, and the well, at, at the end of the day, this council's discretion. So can we clean this up after the meeting? <laughs> well, I'd rather for yeah. Okay, yeah. Get it um, out there. Well, basically, yeah. Uh, review on the, at the first of June. Is that the right time? To review? Should we be reviewing it in the summer or the winter? I don't, do you know what I mean? That's the other thing. We'll review at budget time. Yeah, review the policy. Yeah, but no, no, but I'm talking about like Jim suggested. So we have a date, right? So it'd be whether Jim through July 1st, Dave said June 1st, in terms of what would be the cutoff date for these lakes to apply for said yearly funding. Uh, first come first, sir. So everybody's got to, you know, what I mean, by June, by June 1st, and then it would reset and go for the next year and kind of. Probably, like Bob said, with it being a pilot project, that'll be something that we can keep an eye on. It's hopefully it's you know hopefully it's distributed fairly, um, but we do have the discretion in the end. So if we see that happening, um, I think we can deal with that, and maybe Bob can fine tune some of the wording and do an amended. Uh, um, he could do an amended report if need be following this meeting. Uh, there could be some little tweaking to do. Um, but for now, it probably works, and and uh, you know, as needed, that'd be better on an as needed basis. <laughs> so, that's, that's more blurry. Okay, so so we have a motion on the floor. For you, Mr. Mayor, I think we need to give the, yeah. the CEO a direction. Yeah. I don't think it's fair to send him away and bring back another uh, report that we don't like. I think he's asked a simple question. If you don't want it on a surf, first come surf, per surf, or whatever. <laughs> first how thing. do you want it right. laid out? Maybe he has a suggestion. Well, through you, Mayor Martin, I could I could write it in that it's one grant per lake. Yeah. If that's what you prefer, we okay. could write it that way. Per year? Per year. That yeah. Would, I, think so. I think that would that would cap most of this. Oh. I yeah, just add that land. It'll be first come, first serve, one grant per lake. With a limit of one With grant. A limit per of lake one grant per, per lake. All right. And then council, yeah. we can look, we'll have, or whoever's here will have oversight over who's getting one. So, get it okay. Okay. We're not, yeah. I'm not yeah. attacking the turtles. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Go straight back. It's still going to come on a first come, first serve basis. So, but only one per lake, though. Yeah. One per one, lake. Okay, one per lake. That's one, per lake. Yeah. one per lake right. per year. Yeah. And then that way, if the other one's going to apply, then per yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'll add that language into the end yeah. of it, and that's covered. Okay, okay. that's very welcome, Bob. Good job. For the first round, that worked anyways, Bob, it's and that way okay. we can see what kind of reception we get from it. So, um, yes, through you, Mayor Martin, we'll send it out to the lake associations. Uh, we'll amend the wording, we'll send it out to the lake association. Everyone will be aware. Okay, thank you. All right, so we have a motion on the floor um, with the, uh, is that okay with the? So okay, there is a, the mover. okay, the mover's okay with the changes and the seconder, Hart, you're okay with the changes? 
Yes. Okay. Call a question. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. All right. And the last report here we have for for a break is the uh, Lions Club agreement there. It's been a long time on the table. Bob's got something prepared here. Um, looking for direction. So, yes, through you, Mayor Martin, it, it, perhaps by coincidence, exactly six months ago today, we brought a report to council, staff brought a report to council regarding a uh, Alliance Club agreement. Uh, we have received some informal uh, response and feedback from the Lions Club. Um, so this report proposes some amendments uh, to the provisions in the agreement, and that's on page two are the proposed amendments. Okay, so council had this to review. What's your thoughts? So it's a short-term agreement that, that'll be reviewed. I think it's well done, Bob, but... Uh, um, yeah, I'll make a motion to approve that, Jim. All right, moved by Councillor Webb that we approve the uh, um, the agreement that Bob prepared. Is there a seconder for that? Is there a seconder? Deputy Mayor Drew is seconding that. With a comment. With a comment, go ahead. And then Councillor Ellis has a question, I think. I'd like to, I'd like to, uh, to second this motion with a comment that this reflects a almost, well, $11,500 to our rate payers. And so this council has taken that responsibility off the Reliance Club. And we all know the reasons why. But I shouldn't say but. They were in a, a COVID situation, and so were the rest of our municipality. I guess what I'm getting at is I don't think the Lions Club or any other service club who are being given this opportunity should continue to come back and ask for uh, free ice time, free roast game time. I, I think the taxpayer here are doing enough. So I don't know where we stand on that. Um, I'm just putting that out, but that's my feelings. Uh, my particular uh, feelings for my, for my rate payers. Um, I have a choice whether I want to uh, donate to a service club or whether I don't when it comes to their, their uh, when they're out uh, soliciting funds for their organization whether it's buying tickets or supporting them in any way but we are taking this on if it passes um, so I, I think that's the extent of it. I, I don't think we should be continually uh, going forward with, yeah, you can, you can have this. If we do, we're going to have to give it to the figure skaters. We're going to have to give it to the ball player. We hired uh, a few years ago, and I don't remember how many, a, a uh, parks arena and facilities manager to manage this because councils thought at the time when we were, we're the taxpayer is paying a lot of money down there, and we were going to turn this around. We'll never break even, but we were going to try and do a better job efficiently. And we can't continue to give stuff away. And what I mean, I don't mean give it away, but we can't, We, in my opinion, anyway, we can't continue to uh, have our staff doing other things it, it should be a, a 
user pay system. I guess that's the end. I, I'm stumbling with words here because I'm trying to be politically correct. But I think we're doing a good thing here as a council, but enough is enough. I'll just leave it there. And okay. I still sign the motion. Okay. Uh, Councillor Ellis, uh, you had a comment, and then Councillor Pomeroy. You're muted, Larry. I finally got my uh, technology working here, and then I didn't use it. Anyway, uh, without echoing uh, Deputy Mayor Jarreau's comments, um, I do have one question uh, regarding, and I've reread it here, uh, regarding the bookings of uh, our arena, uh, as in the section upstairs that the Lions control. Um, could Bob? Could Bob comment on how that's going to work now? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So we're proposing that uh, uh, events be booked through a shared calendar that both the township and the Lions uh, can see, and we will both book events as required. Okay, who has the right to say yes or no to somebody that would like to rent it? We both do. So the Lions Club will rent to, uh, as permitted in the in the previous agreement, the Lions Club will rent to local organizations, for example, birthday parties, and take the revenue from those events. The township will book when we require it for a meeting, uh, a special council meeting or a public meeting, we will book it in. Okay. Um, so it has been, as you say, a year since we opt to take on the cost of operating the lion's part of the building. Uh, I believe it was the tune of about $14,000. Uh, do we have, um, have we ever had any report back from the lions of the status of their organization? Financial status, sorry. Uh, through you, Mayor Martin, not to my knowledge. So today, the way this works here, it would be uh, if it's agreed upon with council, this would be forwarded to the Lions as part of the negotiation. This is what we've come up with, which, like has been said, it's uh, um, it's as fair as you can get. Um, we're taking over all the expenses for. Um, it can be reviewed after six months, but it's uh, in. Two years, so they should be on their feet, and I think there'll be a new negotiation happen then. But, uh, uh, anyways, I'll. It's covered here, and whether they agree to it or not, it's another story. That's uh, this is what we come up with, and uh, I think it covered everything that they were asking um, to help them get back on their feet. But, uh, like was said, it, uh, there will come a time when uh, um, once they're back on their feet, it'll it'll. Uh, We'll have to work together again. So, um, Barry, you had a comment? Yeah, well, they'd be a fool not to assume this. But further to that, um, you know, we asked a long time ago to see their books, what kind of a financial position they're in. That was never, ever brought to us at all. And, uh, you know, since then, we've went ahead and uh, give them the, the revenue from the dump, you know, the uh, the models. We don't know how much they're making on that. Um, I think it's only fair when we're giving away taxpayers' dollars here, what, you know, what's what's on their books? I mean, we're, we're taking on another $14,000 a year and If, if it was your business, you would want to see the books. And I, I would like to see the books. What kind of a financial position are they in? How much do they make from the bottom line? You know, it's, it adds to the, uh, it adds to the equation. So it is a short-term agreement. So that's where when we do the review after six months or, or it can be reviewed after six months, we could add that in there that we have a financial report then. Um, I'd like a financial report beforehand. 
maybe maybe we can cut down some of this thirteen or fourteen thousand dollar. Do they need it? Okay, so um, what's your thought there, uh, Dave? You or Hart? You did you move this one here and Dave second it? Yep. So what's your thought, Tart? You made the motion here to approve this. Did you want to add anything in there about the um, the accounting side of things, or do you want to well, leave? I mean, I understand the point uh, Councillor Pomeroy is trying to make. Um, I think you, we can get them to bring their books in here. It's not going to impress you. I don't think they're hiding anything from us in terms of you know, there's a pot of gold there that that they're not telling us about. They're basically. Uh, they're on their last legs and really like you know just so the community knows if we don't help them here there'll be no lions club in this town so you know and i understand that it's money and it's taxpayers money and we can't support them forever as the mayor said this is there's a time frame to this but i think they're a big part of this community and you know as as the mayor said we're trying to to extend an olive branch here or whatever helping hand to get them through this time you know, we've lost rotary. We've lost, last year we lost figure skating. We don't know if they're coming back. All these small service groups are disappearing from our town. And I don't want to be one that turns their, our back on them. I understand. I don't want to, you know, financially fund them every year per se, but in times like this where they need a, need a hand, I'll be the one that's there to, to help them. And I think the rest of the council should be too. I don't think we should be pinching pennies here. So, yeah, this is the community side of things. So um, I think the key words here are short-term agreement. This isn't a 25-year agreement like we've done in the past. This agreement is going to be reviewed. And, you know, council will have their say in whatever happens past the two years. Um, it's going to be reviewed in six months. We can review it in six months. We can ask for the, for the um, finance report, but I think, like Hart said, from everything I've heard from them, they can hardly get to the next week. I mean, they haven't had any bingos in two years. That was their big money maker. The jamboree's gone. That was a big money maker. Um, there's no money here. Um, this is a olive branch to try and get them through this this tough time. Um, it would be nice if we could do it for all the the clubs, but this is a community group that makes a lot of things happen. So, I think it's a good thing. I think Bob put a lot of work into this to kind of, you know make it uh, kind of work for the time being, but whether this, they're, they've got the ultimate say, this may not suit them. Um, if it doesn't, so be it. But uh, we are reaching out to them here to offer them something to get through the next uh, short term. And uh, I think, you know, it's a good thing for our community, but uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, we do have a motion on the floor um, to go ahead with this. Um, and there was a little change there, Bob, as far, was there any changes in this one? I don't think there's no, no change. You, Mayor Martin, no, no uh, amendments. Uh, as so, so we have a motion to pass this short-term agreement um, and we have a seconder. Um, if there's no other comments around the motion, I'll call the question. All in favor of this motion? And that's carried. Larry, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, then uh, in regarding uh, the statement that we spoke about, we're reviewing this in six months, and I would I would put a motion on the floor that we request a financial statement at the six month period. Okay. Um, all right, so we have a motion on the floor for uh, with regards to this that we have a report come back to us at six months. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor Pomeroy seconding that. Okay. Any questions or comments around the motion? All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Right, so, through, through uh, here, if I could just ask Councillor Ellis, is that is that to include the bottle drive uh, proceeds? Their report should show everything, I think, Bob. Sure. Okay. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Bob. Uh, yes, I would. I would presume a financial statement would include their revenue from all proceeds. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Okay. All right then. So. Right. So we're now at twelve oh four. So, Mr. Mayor, just just to clarify things, this this uh, motion that was made when passed, uh, this hasn't been approved by the by the Lions Club yet. So it's pretty premature. I, I understand your your motion, and I voted for it. But the six months won't kick in today. It'll kick in from when we hear from the Lions Club. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, from signing of the agreement, if no, they sign. so, so, no, through you, Mayor, Mayor Martin, the the agreement is to be dated July first. So it'll be a, okay. if they approve it, it'll be a six month agreement before we review it. So that'll be January. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Then, so we'll, let's take a. Um, I don't know. We won't be on council. <laughs> take a ten minute break. Uh, so um, moved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moved by Deputy Mayor Duro, I think that was, and seconded by Councillor yeah. Webb. Or yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All in favor, and that's carried. So let's come back here at uh, quarter after and see what we can wrap this up. Uh, All right. Perfect. Okay. So I'll call the meeting back to order, and uh, we'll move into correspondence. We have. Uh, three action items here. Um, so I'll start off with the first one is with regards to Cordova Lake and the uh, um, the regatta. <laughs> yes. Sorry, Mayor Martin, if I could ask a question, please. If we could take a resolution to resume the meeting and extend curfew, please. Oh. Hmm? Oh, we haven't gone past we haven't gone past curfew yet, have we? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go past curfew. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Motion to resume the meeting and go past curfew. Motion to resume, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Ellis, seconded by Councilor Webb. All in favor? That's carried. Okay, um, so we'll move into uh, the first piece of correspondence here, and that's uh, with regards to Cordova Lake Cottage Association regatta request. What's your thought? Pretty straightforward. Motion to approve. Okay, moved by Councillor Webb that we approve. <clears throat> I think this is a yearly thing, isn't it? Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I think it's a yearly thing too. Um, did we have a problem there years ago? I remember when we went to the Cottage Association meeting that the neighbor was part of the problem there. I don't know. Yeah, they, probably that I, was. Yeah. yeah, but they got all their insurance and everything else in order. So hopefully uh, it turns out uh, good for them. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll second that, whatever. Okay. Did somebody make a motion? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. I'll second okay. that. Okay. Seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Any other questions? All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, our next was a letter that uh, was sent to me from Ambrose Moran, and a lot of this stuff is just to keep council updated on what's going on, and uh, it has been explained to the group that, uh, like I said at the beginning of the meeting, it's a township-wide or province-wide uh, problem, and it's not just narrowed in at uh, Jack's Lake, so we're doing the best we can with the staff that we have, and uh, um, it was just to receive the letter. Um, Bob, go ahead. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, I would just like to uh, report to Council that the uh, the temporary locations, as identified in the first uh, letter from Mr. Moran, uh, are being investigated by our manager of public works. He has reached out to the ministry uh, to get approval to use those sites, so we're waiting for a response. Good, thank you. So, is there any other questions around this? If not, I'll take a motion to receive the letter. Motion to receive. Moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux. Seconder, Councillor Webb. Any questions or comments? All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, 
the next one here is a letter that was sent to me from uh, Blue Mountain Marina with regards to the boat ramp down there. Um, what's council's thoughts here? It doesn't have a number in it, but it was around $3,500 and they were looking at trying to split it. But uh, um, it's one of those ones we never hear much about down there. So, And it's you know, probably because it's off of a private road. It's down where the campsite is down there at the end of the lake. What's council's thoughts? Probably needs a number with it, maybe. It's uh, go ahead, Barry. Do we own a piece of property or it's a ministry you own, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's next to that campground down there. That well, it's not really a campground, but it got used as a campground. It's been posted too. It's kind of like a bottle lake thing. But it's a it is a boat launch that's used by that end of the lake. Yeah. So What's council's thoughts on replying to Daryl here? I guess we're contributing to one end. Dave, go ahead. Through you, Mayor Martin. At the present time, we don't have boarded bodies or clean that boat ramp off, do we? No, they had drains lined up to do it, but it was. Like I say, there's no number on here, but I thought it was like $3,500 and they were gonna try and do their half, but uh, they've already got all the permits and everything, but uh, they were just seeing if there was any help, like like many. Yeah, it wouldn't be, they're not looking for our staff as much as uh, to help with the finance side of it. No, I, I thank you, Mr. Mayor, I realized that. I, I didn't think we were in there there Therefore, if, uh, you know, one of those things, motion to, sorry, oh, sorry, I was just, uh, through you, Mayor Martin, the, the email indicates that there is a cost estimate attached, but it never came through with the email. Okay. So I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if there's a number that you've seen, but it wasn't there. Well, it's, you know what, it sounds like they're going ahead with it anyway. Maybe we better, uh, yeah. We should get the cost there to see what it is. I don't go by my memory. Um, maybe maybe we should defer this. Like I say, they're going to go ahead anyways with it. It won't hold them up. But if there's a, any, you know, we're not saying no to them, but we need to see how much it is. Motion to defer. Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Drill that we defer this till we get more information. Is there a seconder? Councillor Ellis? All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, and then we have correspondence with uh, for information. Um, if there's nothing with that, I'll take a motion to receive the balance of the correspondence. Moved by Councillor Webb. Seconder. Somebody seconding that? Councillor Pomeroy? All in favor? That's carried. Okay, then we'll uh, move into uh, um, committee liaison reports. And um, the, the first part there, there was a part about the county council update. Uh, we didn't have a county council meeting since. Uh, our last meeting, it was before that one. So we're kind of moving into summer mode meeting. So there was nothing to report. I don't have anything anyways. Do you, Dave? Uh, nothing to report, Mr. Mayor, from the from the previous council meeting. No. Uh, Thursday, Thursday night is our awards night. And, uh, so that's about all the updates I have. Yeah. And like unlike other years, normally we'd be encouraging councils to attend the awards banquet, but it's kind of a closed thing this year. It's just by invitation only because of the protocols and things going on. So, um, so the the people that are being awarded have been able to invite, I think, five people or something like that. 
um, unless you were invited by them, uh, it was just yeah. Dave and I representing the township. So, giving them a ride. Okay. Um, so we have uh, some minutes here from the Eastern Ontario Trails Alliance, Dave. Uh, minutes from the April 14th meeting. Uh, is there anything that you need to add to that or I'll get a motion to receive them? I'll just make a motion to receive with the comment that if there's any questions, I'll answer them. Okay. Seeing none, I'll, uh, is there a seconder to that? Councillor Ellis? All in favor? All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, we have no written or oral notice of motion. So I'll move into uh, new business. And we have a number of things there. Uh, Councillor Ellis. Um, so we can go through them one by one here if you like. Yes, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. I, I have some items here that um, I've brought forward for Council's um, input and consideration um, and give staff some direction on some of them. Uh, the first one is, uh, uh, as we all know, virtual meetings are probably going to be a thing of the future or continue. Um, we hear different uh, municipalities as well as the county, uh, how they're structuring uh, their meetings going forward, but I believe it requires a policy. And so uh, I put it on the table for council's input, uh, and then we can give some direction to staff uh, to create a policy for the future meetings. So my own personal comments are the fact that I believe, uh, as I just said, virtual meetings are very likely gonna be a way of the future. Uh, I think some of the things that um, probably should be addressed in a policy are the fact that somebody could be not feeling well and could be at home uh, and still attend a, a council meeting as I'm presently doing, um, as well as uh, if somebody was on vacation and felt that they wanted to uh, put themselves out there to attend a council meeting virtually, um, could do so, but I think it requires some input from council uh, as to how we want to go forward, whether it's a, a regular thing for a council meeting or not. So I'll put it on the floor for council's uh, consideration so staff can have some direction. Okay, so I know Bob was working on something, but uh, um, yeah, so we it would be good. This would be part of our council procedural bylaw, I would imagine to have another line under it for virtual meetings. Bob, is that right? Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, we have commenced the update of our procedural bylaw, which if all goes well, um, of course we have other bylaws to write now after our planning meeting, but <laughs> if all goes well, we will have that for our July meeting and it will include a provision uh, for hybrid meetings. Um, I believe hybrid meetings are here to stay. Uh, we're updating our council chamber tomorrow with the new audio video equipment. So hybrid meetings will be included in our procedure bylaw. Very, very okay. good, Bob. Well, that you don't need anything uh, other than that from council then? I, I don't think so. Very no. good. I, I don't think so. And just okay. keep in mind a lot of these things, like when the new council comes in, the procedure bylaw will be gone over again and things can be changed, such as times of meeting, whatever all of that stuff will be opened up again. So, and it could change then. Uh, uh, second one is uh, I asked one time in the past regarding uh, when our um, municipal buildings were all reviewed for structural, uh, if the arena had had a good structural review. So I'm asking again today. So, Ryan, if you're there, would that be was that a part of the facility assessment? Uh, hello. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that question for you for me? Thanks. Okay. Uh, in the past, all our municipal buildings had a structural or a review as to the conditions of the buildings. And I don't recall having a, a report regarding our arena. 
Okay. Well, was there a re was there a review done of the building? Uh, so through you, Mayor Martin, um, we did have a review done, a facility condition assessment completed in uh, uh, two uh, thousand eighteen. Okay. And then and uh, and then most recently we did have um, because we were successful in getting the uh, the grant for the arena. Uh, we did have a structural engineer conduct an inspection uh, August of 2021 to determine uh, uh, what the load capacity would be that we could handle on that roof for the for the replacement of the roof. So we've had two engineers in in the last uh, three years. Okay, perfect. That's all I was concerned about before we go forward with uh, great plans that we have there. Uh, just making sure that the building is is as it should be. Yeah, so three you, Mayor Martin. Um, yeah, the company was Eastern Engineering, uh, and they were in uh, August of 2021, and and we have received the report, and they did uh, they did provide uh, information on how we could proceed with the design, and then so since that since that uh, report came in, we did complete a design for the roof replacement based on um, what was approved by the engineer at that time. Okay, very good. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, the next one is. Uh, as was brought up, I believe, at our last council meeting as well. Um, some feedback and some communication with our MPP, Dave Smith, regarding the, the long-term care. I know uh, Mr. Smith or MPP Smith was very busy through an election period. We didn't want to bother him then, but that's over. And I'm sure everybody sitting at this table is anxious to hear. Um, uh, an update from him and where we stand. Go ahead, Bob. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, I have reached out to MPP Smith uh, regarding an update uh, pertaining to the long-term care home. And I've, I've simply asked the question, uh, when will we have a contact name? We need to get a contact name from the ministry to work with on this project. So MPP Smith uh, did respond and he is reaching out to the ministry to get us a contact name so we can start that process. Um, he did indicate that things may be on hold for a few days until the cabinet is sworn in. So that my understanding is scheduled for Friday. And then after that happens, uh, we should be hearing more news. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, last thing, I, I had a chat with Bob the other day in the office regarding our policy regarding um, tender quotes. Um, and uh, they are always a sealed quote. And is there always a member of council there to review any of those items? Are you talking, uh, are you talking quotes or tenders, Larry? I believe, sorry, I didn't read my own writing here. Well, with, I was speaking about both. Okay, Bob, did you want to explain them or I can, it's up to you. Yeah, through you, Mayor Martin, I, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't bring the policy with me. Um, but Councillor Ellis and I did review this. Um, off the top of my head, tenders, sealed tenders are advertised and received. Uh, I believe the threshold is over $50,000. There's a threshold between 25 and 50. Um, and then there's a threshold below that where staff can simply get quotations and advise council. Um, if our manager of parks and recreation is still on the call, he, I think he and I reviewed this yesterday. He may have that detail. Thank you, Bob. Yes, um, I do have the policy in front of me. Um, the policy or the bylaw, sorry, it's uh, bylaw number 2008-77. Um, and, and you are correct, Bob, in the threshold. So anything uh, between zero and uh, $15,000, uh, you can go ahead and proceed without getting any written or verbal quotations as the policy states. And then the next uh, threshold, um, uh, section one, subsection B is uh, fifteen thousand and one dollar to twenty five thousand um, dollars. The policy uh, basically says that 
you can obtain either verbal, three written or three verbal um, quotations for the work. Um, the report to council would uh, isn't necessarily required uh, to proceed with the work. That is a report that can come after work, after the purchases has been taken place and then $25,000 to $50,000 is we get into doing uh posting it for uh, public uh for for the public to to uh provide a submission so you would uh, post on the website uh possibly use bids and tenders as your platform to extend your audience um in, in that event um you can do um you can proceed if you if you have less than three quotations as long as you attempted to get three and um in that case, though, you would require a report to council in order to uh, award that work. So that would have to happen prior to that uh, work being um, committed to to the vendor. Um, and the, and in that case, you would you would uh, you would have um, a committee a council committee uh, member uh, present, uh, the CAO and the department head uh, for that opening, and then. Um, as you know, with the with the tender process, it's uh, it's a it's a public process that um, requires you to post for a certain amount of time, and and when it closes, they are open in public, so you can the public are allowed to attend for the opening. So that just kind of clarifies how that works. And it was uh, my questioning was more around what was sealed, re what was required to be received, sealed, and open. Uh, with others present. So yeah, so through you, Mayor Martin, to councillors, uh, as previously stated, uh, fifty thousand is the threshold where the public is to be uh, invited or at least welcome to uh, sit in for the opening. Thank you, thank you, Ryan. You good. Um, last thing, uh, I was hoping our chief Haynes would have been at uh, council today because I was questioning. Um, the uh, civic address signs again, um, and what has been put in place to address them. Um, I do know that it had nothing to do with uh, our uh, deputy fire chief who is no longer with us. So uh, if they're not being done because he's not here. Um, so that's that was part of my questioning about how we're pro progressing with getting the civic address signs up. Um, and I also talked about about this the other day as well and in, in regarding the liability of not having a civic address sign placed on a property. And there's a number of them. Um, and so that's why I brought it through open council to, to, um, to discuss or to talk about. So is that, are you talking about property? Are you talking with a house on them or empty lots? Either or. Okay. I know the fire chief said he doesn't require to put them on vacant lots, um, but I'm not so so sure of that. That's why I had the conversation with uh, CAO Bob in the office. Okay. All right, Bob, go ahead. Yes, <clears throat> through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, Further to my discussion with Councillor Ellis, I did reach out to our municipal solicitor to get clarification uh, on the vacant lot situation. I am still awaiting a response, but when that response comes, I'll certainly bring it forward to Council. And, and uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor to Bob, do you know if uh, Ray has made any progress in getting any of the signs up? Because uh, we're not talking a three or four or half a dozen, there's um, a great number of them. Through you, Mayor Martin, my understanding is progress has been made, but to get specifications, I was hoping that the chief would be here, but he was called away. So we'll get clarity on that question. Very good. Thank you, Bob. You're and um, just one last thing, it's not on the list here, but I just wanted uh, council and to be aware that uh, the uh, cemetery board, uh, we had a, a virtual meeting regarding uh, support for the uh, Pine Grove Cemetery and the uh, Maple, Grave, Maple Grove Cemetery caretaker has taken on the task to help support uh, the cleanup at uh, Pine Grove. As we all know, it's, it was a disaster area there. 
And I understand there's uh, several people volunteering help as well. Um, and I was, was asked why the municipality wouldn't have uh, been able to help out there. Um, I know we are busy trying to maintain uh, the public properties as in our roads and the, and the debris down where we're liable for not having it removed. So that was my answer, whether there would ever be any uh, opportunity to uh, support uh, the Maple Grove or the Pine Grove uh, issue there. So yeah, Peter went over there yesterday because in the past every year they do go over and pick up the debris and stuff outside the gate. So he went over to ask them if they want to put it outside the gate, they would get it. But I guess the cemetery board ordered bins and stuff uh, to take care of the debris. So it does take, take it off of the township, but the township was there to to offer to chip it up for them and, and get rid of it so they didn't have to do that. But uh, anyways, it's already been taken care of. So that's a good thing um, to get it cleaned up. And just one last one quickly uh, to Ryan. Um, in the Matheson property at the dam, apparently there's a fair amount of debris and garbage uh, in that area that needs a cleanup. If he could have a look at that with his staff. Yeah, through Mayor Martin. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get over there and uh, get that taken care of. Thanks. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, that's it uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, so Barry and then Dave. Yeah, further to Pine Grove, uh, I'd see uh, um, quite a crew there yesterday and uh, Mr. Sharp and Mrs. Sharp were both there and, and uh, quite a few volunteers. And uh, when I came by there this morning coming in, it uh, looking a lot better than what it did yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Dave? Oh, thank you, Mayor Martin. I didn't want to interrupt Councilor Ellis when he was asking his questions, but Ryan, if you're still there, I'd like to ask you one on this structural inspection of the Havelock Arena, if you're there. I don't want to put you on the spot, Ryan, but when, when we did the, uh, the roof inspection and in, uh, in the weight the, the weight bearing process, uh, was it capable of solar panels, the weight? Uh, through was you, that Mayor. taken into consideration? Yeah. Uh, through you, Mayor Martin, um, to Deputy uh, Jarosz comment. We weren't looking at that at this time. However, um, we were, what we were looking at was just doing an overlayment of, uh, of existing um, roofing. Um, what we did learn and it, what is stated in the letter is that we can withstand five pounds per square foot. Um, so if, you know, if we wanted to look at that, we, you know, at least we would have that initially to start. And then if we were going to look at doing any solar panels in the future, um, maybe we could, you know, that, that gives us a baseline to start off of. And, and uh, I'm sure if we were looking at doing that, the solar panel company could, you know, kind of provide some information on, what that load increase would look like, but uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Ryan, give us a baseline. I'm not suggesting we're doing it, just thought for the future, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, so just further to that, the, the five pounds per square foot. So um, uh, when, we, when we were looking at designing the, um, the retrofit or the overlay, um, we're looking at increasing the load at three um, pounds per square foot. That's what it, that's what it works out to be. So we're we're in tolerances of, of the building code for snow load regulations. So um, yeah. So anyways, I I don't know about solar panels. So we'd have to look at that if if that's a flavor of council. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, um, okay. Councillor Ellis. You're muted there. The Madison property uh, trails, um, we were put off by Mr. Drain because of the storm. Is he close to being in there now, uh, Ryan? Uh, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to connect with him today again. Uh, I believe they're starting uh, mid next week. So that's what, uh, that's what he indicated a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they did. They did communicate that they were behind uh, due to some storm damage and things like that. So, which is understandable. 
Um, but yeah, no, we're excited to get started and uh, we've got all the details uh, worked out and everything's been communicated with them what the expectation is. So yeah, we're looking forward to getting that uh, started next week. Okay, very good. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Um, so motion to receive the uh, new business. Do you need any of that, Bob? To, well, there was no... Uh... No, there's no direction. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right then. So the last thing I have here is uh, um, to our Cobia expansion. I was at a meeting there last week, and I asked them if it would be possible to get council in for a tour of the place. We've done it before, and uh, um, I, just where we can squeeze it in, I don't know where it'll be. But uh, I just wanted to make sure council was receptive to maybe doing a tour of the, the plant up there. And if so, I'll try and come up with a few dates and with the work with them and us. Um, what's your thoughts? Yeah. Barry, go ahead. Yeah, I would like to take that on. And are we going to have a road tour this spring? Or well, the summer now. Yeah. And it could be included because that's what we did the last time. We uh, we stopped up on top of the mountains. Yeah. So yeah. I guess we did three lunches with each other. So, um, are we going to have a tour and, and are we just going to get rid of the tour and let? Well, it's, now that they're into the to the building process, up to Peter, that's up to him to order, organize that. Um, we could do this separately with the, the mine. Okay. Um, and then Peter can look at a road tour. If we can tie them together, that would be good. But uh, um, I'll see what we can do here. I think I think everybody would be pretty impressed with what's happening up there. Um, so it's just if I can work the timing out because they, July didn't seem to work for them. I don't know whether it's holidays or what it is, but uh, I'll give them a couple of dates and then see how it works for council and see where it goes. Okay. Okay. All right. If everybody's good with that, I'll uh, I'll speak to them there this afternoon and uh, see if we can come up with a couple of or three dates. Okay, yeah. all right, so there's nothing else listed here on new business. Um, Dave, go ahead. Um, I know I wasn't on time, but I've spoken to our CEO and he's afforded me the uh, opportunity to to bring a couple of things up on a new business. I scolded him first though. <laughs> first of all, when the damage or when we had the, the bad storm, mm -hmm. the parking lot on County Road 50, the sign was half of us hanging down. The ATV club has uh, graciously offered to put that back up, but they weren't going to do it without letting council know or asking for your permission to do so. So if council is okay with that, I will, there's a meeting tonight actually, I will tell them to go ahead and fix the signs. It's just a matter of getting it back up the one pole and broke off or something. If that's no problem. They're continuing to pick up the garbage and cut the grass. So if they want to fix the sign. I, I guess we can let them go ahead and fix it. The other thing in regards to the ATB club, and now my, my dates are not correct probably, but uh, I thought perhaps Bob, uh, our CEO, received a letter by now. But on, let's say in mid uh, July the 16th, I believe it might be uh, Owen. Lonnie. Lonnie has done a fabulous job in organizing a cancer run uh, through the ATV club, and uh, the the it's booked. Uh, the, all proceeds will be going to the uh, the local cancer society, um, and they'll have all kinds of stuff. Uh, it'll be a sanctioned ride, meaning that uh, EOTA has already waived the permit fee for a special event. Um, there will be hot dogs and hamburgers and gifts and draw prizes and so on. So he did, he's did a marvelous job there. Uh, in, in, in courtesy uh, to the council, uh, to our council, uh, they, re, they, they want to start uh, in the afternoon uh, on the Friday to set up their, their rigging, uh, their tent or whatever, later Friday afternoon. 
so they'll be ready to go Saturday morning because there's a lot of registration to do on Saturday mornings and it just simply won't have time to set up. So we're just asking uh, uh, council's uh, permission to do that. I don't think it really requires permission. I mean, uh, there's cars left there all the time because they're going on three and four day snowmobile runs and it's really four two or three day ATV runs. But as a courtesy to council, they would uh, they would appreciate the letter saying, yeah, go ahead and set up on a Friday, Friday afternoon and you'll be ready to go Saturday morning. So if that's okay with council, I would uh, request uh, our CEO to send them uh, an email in that regard. Do we need a motion to that effect, Bob? Yes, please. That's okay. I yeah. got one. All right. We should get a motion for both of these yeah. items. Yes. Yeah. So sign repair as well. Yep. <coughs> you can combine I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Do you move that, Barry? Yeah. No, I'd be happy to second it. Seconded by Dave. All in favor? And that's carried. All right. Perfect. Okay. Is that good, Bob? That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, then. So that's all that's listed on new business. Um, so we'll move into bylaws here. And the first bylaw we already dealt with. So the second bylaw is to authorize mayor and clerk to execute an agreement between the corporations township of Havelock, Belmont, Mathoon, and John and Gerald Dean Elliott pertaining to um, 594 Fire Route 93A. Um, look for a motion to pass that bylaw. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Ellis. All in favor? And that's carried. The next one here is a bylaw to amend bylaw 2021-062. Um, otherwise known as Township of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw. Motion for that. Councillor Pomeroy. Seconder. Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor. And that's carried. Okay, the next uh, bylaw here is a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute an agreement between the Corporation Township of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen, and Tom, Thomas William Shaw and James Allen Shaw with regard to the merger agreement. Moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux, seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. And the last bylaw here is bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the corporation of the county of Peterborough, Central Area Snowmobile Club, uh, and the township of Havelock Palmasoon for demolishing and replacement of the transfer of the uh, burnt dam bridge. Motion for that. Councillor Ellis, mm -hmm. Councillor Webb, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, our next item here is confirming bylaw for today's meeting. Most Councillor Webb, Councillor Ellis, all in favor, and that's carried. And that motion to adjourn is moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Webb, all in favor, and that's carried.